All right, and now to quickly unmute everything and say hello, everyone, and welcome to today's podcast, the Real Time Chatting Podcast. Hi. Uh, I'm Josh. I'm here as always with S. Hello. Uh, and today's guest, we got Cool Kid. Hey, guys. Hi. Uh, How's it going? It's all good, man. Oh, so, yeah, you've... I guess we'll start with uh, why you're here, I guess. You're here for Mega Man. I think we got you one for, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And Richie recently did it GDQ. Uh, what? Did you do anything else at GDQ, actually? He did work, uh, I saw, but uh, that's not. I shouldn't speak for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. I, I did Quake as well. Yeah. Quake and Mega Man. That's what I did. Okay, so I might ask you some questions about Quake, because... When we in one of our earlier episodes we saw that a new skip was found in Quake, uh, yeah. and we were trying to understand it. It's like he's just shooting at a wall. What's going on? Uh, so we can ask you about that later, I guess. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, what, what have you guys been doing this week? Uh, Google, you've obviously been at GDQ. Did you just get back, or? Yeah, I got back on Monday. Well, I left Sunday, but got back on Monday due to time zone differences and such. Yeah. So. Um, uh, since then, I have, I don't know, done quick speed runs, and yeah, that's that's about it. I got home, started doing quick speed runs. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, when we get to the AGDQ recap section, we'll ask you about you know the event and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what, what, have you been doing anything interesting, S? Because I haven't. Absolutely not. No. Okay. Uh, I I did two streams, I think. Okay. No one. I did one stream where I just did like um, some five city any percent run without replays, just because I uh, was I, I had like an hour free, so I was like, let's do that. Um, I don't think I streamed anything else. Well, no, I didn't. Okay. Well, I haven't done much either. I haven't done much in the way of streaming. Like, this morning I did Crash Team Racing again for the first time in ages. Oh, yeah. just, just a de-rust run. Um, but it turned into a four-hour practice. This one skip at the end of the game. God, I hate this session. So. And yeah. It's like every time I get into it, I play through the whole game. And I'm like, oh, I love this game. Why did I stop speedrunning it? And then I get to the last two tracks. And I'm like, I remember why I stopped. <laughs> like, the last two <laughs> tracks have really difficult skip on them. And because they're both boss tracks, you have to do them both twice. So it's like, you do both, and then you do both again. And it's like, if you mess those skips up, you waste so much time. It's awful <laughs> right at the end of the run. Um, but yeah, I just need to get good at those skips. Because everyone else can do them, like, safe and slow. I just can't even do that. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, I haven't streamed much at all. I've been, like... I've been... Uh, me and my, like, friends... Like Tuduva and Wayno and that lot, uh, and Trollbear and Emma. We've been playing Minecraft bingos an awful lot recently, <laughs> of all things. Um, and there was like, there was this website we were using, like engineer.net or something, some random guy's website who copied the Ocarina of Time bingo code from Speedruns Live. But he added a load of crappy goals, and we were using that for ages. And because me and Tuduva are like programmers, we're just like, man, we could make a better version of this. So then, after like a week, we were like, screw it, let's do it, and we made a better version. <laughs> so I've been like, just programming that, and I've never made a website before, so that was fun. But other than that, I haven't done anything like speedrunning-wise, it's vaguely speedrunning related. Mm. Alright, so we all had a boring week, that's good. <laughs> Alright, moving on oh, from the intro. <laughs> do we have any announcements or anything in the intro? Uh... I don't think so. No. Nope. All right then. Move it on. Wow, that was a gold split. <laughs> uh, so we'll go straight into speedruns recap, where we uh, go through all of the speedrun records we could find this week. Mm -hmm. It wasn't too much, I guess, because GDQ was happening. Although I did notice while I was looking through the list of records, I found lots of records that were like, oh hey, this game was at GDQ, and this was the category I practiced, and then I went home and did a run, and it was really good, and I posted it. <laughs> there was a lot of that. I can't remember the exact games. Um, but it was like Batman City and Batman Arkham City and stuff. But I don't think that was by the same runner. But uh, I can't remember. 
there were like three of them I saw that were like, you know, they practiced the hell out of that game for GDQ and then went home and did a good run. <laughs> um, but yeah, anyway, other than that... Were there what... any, any PBs at the GDQ this year? I don't any know, PBs, actually. world records? I think there were, but... I think like almost all of them, if not, I mean, at least most of them were in like obscure games. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember mm, so. seeing a few. And they were like obscure stuff. Makes but, sense. Uh, but yeah, it's, it still counts, obviously. But I don't recall yeah. which games at mm. all. There's probably a list somewhere. Some person's been like, "This is all the only thing that matters from GDQ is the world records," <laughs> and they made a list of it probably. <laughs> um, but I'll look that up. But anyway. This is the, the speedrun recaps from this week outside of GDQ. <laughs> the ones we could find. Um, and we could start with, I'm assuming you know about this S, because I didn't put this Yes, in. I do. Okay. Well, um, I, I was looking, uh, I, I personally didn't actually look for um, for games. I just saw it on my PMO Twitter feed and I was like, hey, Andrew Tournament 2003 was beaten. Uh, and it's under the most difficult um, difficulty as well. The oh, most right. difficult difficult um but um so i think this is by uh mms rhino let me just confirm that yes and um he's actually been been like running unreal tournament games like every single one of them i think like quite uh, a lot uh, on and off a bit and it's nice to see him do um do Unreal Tournament 2003, which is one of the more obscure um, Unreal Tournaments because it's sort of like a demo for Unreal Tournament 2004, um, and you can't you, you can't get it on Steam, um, and but it's actually um, pretty pretty difficult run. Like a demo for 2004. Well, like they released Unreal Tournament 2003, and it had a demo like which is two maps. And then a year later, they released Unreal Tournament 2004, which also had a demo of two maps. And it's basically Unreal Tournament 2003 with some extra maps and extra game modes and like some other extra stuff. I think if you could show um, that you owned uh, UT 2003 when you bought UT 2004, that you could get a discount. All oh, right. So, you know, that says something about how similar the two are and... You know, Unreal Tournament 2004 is just like an improved version of 2003, uh, which is why 2003 isn't available on Steam because. But the campaign is completely different. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. The older maps, um, like the campaign for 2004, uses the new maps that were added, and then the Unreal Tournament 2003, I need to find a shorter way of saying that. <laughs> that one um, uses like the older maps that were already came with 2003, of course. Hmm. And uh, I think those maps are actually a bit more fun. So I like the um, the campaign mode for this game a bit better. Um, it, it's also a bit more doable uh, than 2004, because in 2004 has a money mechanic where you have to pay an entry fee. Uh, and I guess it wouldn't be a problem um, if you're good at the game, but from what I know, no one has actually done a godlike run for 2004. Yeah, they haven't, because of this extra mechanic that like, locks you out of um, maps if you don't have enough money, and you're going to fail a lot, I guess. Right, okay, so it's like it's like gated how fast you can do it, basically. Like yeah, so money, uh, if, if you fail, you... Um, like, if you do a restart, then you lose money, and when your money is out, you can't do that map again, so mm. you have to do one of the earlier maps to gain money again. All right, uh, that makes mm. sense. And I think 2004, the AI is also a bit more difficult. Mm. So I, I don't actually know why, well, because I'm assuming that Rhino is is like is probably nailing this now, because he, he does godlike runs on 2003 fairly regularly. Like once every blue moon, and um, uh, so man, I don't know why he hasn't tried um, 2004 yet. But yeah, 2003 campaign on the most difficult difficulty, pretty good, pretty difficult, and I'm glad to see someone run this. Yeah, cool. Especially if it's like a, a obscure thing like that, we mm. can't even get it anymore. All right, that's cool. Uh, Wow, we're well, behind on that. <laughs> um, the next one, uh, Mass Effect New Game Plus, 
Is there uh, like yeah. new stuff? Um, well, I don't know. I asked, but I don't think they responded now. Um, apparently, uh, Mass Effect One, uh, the new game plus category, your name here has held it since 2013. Mm. And then earlier this week, uh, Letters Words beat it. And then a few days later, uh, Wymorn beat that time. So um, two new world records in one week since 2013. Um, and this game is incredibly broken. Oh, um, really? Is it? I'm just watching. <laughs> this the is the, um, the the Mako, I think it's called. Um it's it's a car, and you're not actually supposed to be out there with the car. Uh, and the car is it, it, it drives terribly, um, and uh, you, you get stuck and stuff, and it just flips. And um, there's a, sh a lot of out of bounds in this game too. Really, uh, I wouldn't be able to give you a timestamp right away. Um, but yeah, this game is broken. And, uh, so, two people got together and decided to do runs of it to get records. I'm not from sure if, if if they they did it together, but like they just happened to uh, you know to beat that time. And I'm not sure if it's because of something new that was discovered or if they just both decided to uh, to do it again. Yeah. And I'm not sure like if one inspired the other or not, uh, and if if. Or if it was just coincidence that two people started running it. Yeah, we'd have to ask them. Because every other run on this leaderboard bar one is like years old. Like four years yeah. even. Like, so yeah, your your name here, you've had the, if you're saying, what were you saying? He had the previous world record for four years. And mm. then two random people come at once. That seems a bit of a coincidence for me. So they yeah, must be like... So there must be something new. Uh, I checked out the Discord real quick. But like, I only skimmed through it real quickly. And... Uh, there might be something new, but in, I'm not completely sure about that. So okay. I I sent one of them a message, but they haven't responded yet. All right. Well, we'll have to try and do get that journalism going <laughs> <And> then, like, <laughs> yeah. next week. One like ask them. That's weird. Yeah, I I hope they uh, they improve this because this run seems really uh, fun to watch. Of all, it's out of bounds. Oh, here's a nice RNG puzzle, by the way. <laughs> I really would have thought Mass Effect had more runners. Like, isn't this like super popular? Yeah, it, it's a really popular series, but uh, I'm not sure why there's so little uh, runners. Mm. I guess it's just the style of game. Like, there's not many runners for like Witcher Three or anything like that either. So. Yeah, I, I guess like um, because it's a fairly story-driven game. I guess. Yeah. With um, all the choices and stuff, I can't imagine routing and yeah. not memorization. It wouldn't be too. Fun. Well, not necessarily that, but just because it, the same people that are attracted to those kind of games, I guess, aren't necessarily the same people who also do speedruns. That's true. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. I guess. <laughs> and the next game, move on. Oh, you were just. Why didn't you put these two together? <laughs> <laughs> what was the point? Why didn't I put these two together? Sort of by alphabet, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, uh, because that that's going sense. to be another game later on. That's also. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, another tournament, two thousand four, by Cobaltet. I have no idea who that is. Um, but this run got verified by Rhino. I'm guessing so. Okay. Uh, it must be legit. Now, <laughs> I have to ask, every time I look at Unreal, there's loads of games, but all of the leaderboards don't have many times on them. Mm. But it seems like we talk about an Unreal game every week. Is it like... <laughs> yes. Yeah, I, it seems to have something to do with like the podcast. Like, <sighs> Unreal series was dead. And then as soon as, as we started the portal, the, 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 not the portal, the podcast... Um, <laughs> yeah you're right i don't know what's up with that <laughs> yeah maybe just could once like one person start doing it more people start doing it because you and um someone else yeah were fighting over it's like record, one right? person per game per game right yeah. like one person runs uh ut99 and one person runs unreal uh, return to nepali and then one person does ut 2004 <laughs> <laughs> is there one no one's done that i can pick up <laughs> easy record <laughs> uh Right, probably a tournament or oh, one wow. of the other championships games that's only available for Xbox or something like that. Okay, I'll look through the the list later. <laughs> because those <laughs> those we haven't even made leaderboards for. All right, uh, moving on. This is we just talked about a load of Unreal. Uh, here, cool kid. Do you know anything about this game? 
This is Pot Pot Saves the Zoo. I love that game. I've seen it. I think it's a like point and click game, but I have no idea what okay. it's like. I, I've seen it. This seems like the sort of game that would play a lot of at GDQs, <laughs> like in casual rooms or wasn't this on a GDQ once? Because there has to be a uh, reason that I know it exists, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, it's pot pot, man. Come on. I don't even know what that is. Like, he's obviously a car, but is it a cartoon? <laughs> is it an original game? I was informed of this when um, I did a Dare Esther run a couple of years ago, and someone said in the comments, what's next? Pot pot saves the zoo? <sighs> and I was like, yeah, and then I looked it up, and that's how I know about this, but I don't know, it's... it's... <laughs> Okay. Well, it, fun fact, in the time we were talking about it, we just watched the entire run, so... <laughs> the, this record is uh, 48 minutes. I lost the website. 30, Second. 39 seconds, this run is. Is but, this um, skippable cutscenes done well? It is. It's like, nice. this is actually fairly impressive. Like, there's The reason I picked this out, even though I didn't know much about it, is because the leaderboard has 41 times on it for any percent. And for such a short game, you'd imagine it'd be fairly optimized, but this guy beat the previous record by almost two seconds. So that's like that's some serious menuing right there. Like the, yeah. It's really hard to tell from the video, but he's clicking on stuff really damn fast. <laughs> like, he I goes into a room. Hmm? Yeah, go on. He, he, like, he goes into a, a new screen, like either picks up an item or solves a puzzle and then moves on to the next screen like really quickly. That penguin bit is slow enough for me to see what's happening. But everything else is like <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> it's lots of clicking. I wonder if um, being a good Ozu player would help with this. Oh yeah. Is it Osu? Or Oz? Yeah, Oz, I don't know. Yeah, we've, we've now watched the run about four times, so <laughs> maybe we should move on. But yeah, I thought this was pretty cool. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting like, menuing speed run, and there are a few of those, but nothing I've seen that's this optimized and this short. Uh, oh, the next next one's a good one. Now, do either of you know anything about Skyrim speedruns? Uh, I know that it's on the whatever engine it is that Fallout uses as well. Yeah. And I know that in Fallout you can save through walls. So yeah. I'm going to assume it is also the case in this game. Uh, it is, sort of, except this is a lot more glitchier. Um, for instance, we just watched them go through a wall of a bucket. <laughs> um, I think in this game, there's like a you got all the Fallout glitches, except the ones with the guns, obviously. And then you have like lots of other stuff. So in this, I actually... Um, I was actually watching this through, because I know this is like a massive glitch fest, and I was kind of interested... And I knew, like, we would watch on the podcast and be like, wow, what's he doing? I've got no idea. I wish we did research. So this time I actually did. And I figured and I figured some stuff out by watching. There's, oh, nice. there's one really cool glitch. Let me see if I can find it. Where it takes a bit of setup, but he, like... Yeah, here we go. So he goes he goes to the a town somewhere and buys a horse with a save file, right? And then he puts the horse on this ledge... And then, and then I'll pause it so I don't ruin it. And then he saves, and then he loads a previous save from earlier and continues on the run. And then every now and then, at certain points, he'll load the save he made with this horse to do this glitch, where he's, like, getting off of the horse, and he's, like, you can't really see it very well, but he's here now, off of the horse, upside down, right? And then he mm -hmm. loads his save that he was just speedrunning on, and then he moves at a million miles an hour. <laughs> and I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah it's like that's really interesting like he 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 wastes time in a speed run to go set something up and then save and then load away all of his process but he like uses that save to mm. set up a glitch that continues across saves it's really interesting i don't think i've seen anything <laughs> like that before but but yeah the, this game is really glitchy at the start he does like some sort of duplication thing where he's like he steals a load of stuff from a shopkeeper, and then the shopkeeper gets angry, and then he punches him, and then he, like, reloads or waits a certain amount of time or something, because you can, like, skip time in this game. And then after that, the shopkeeper isn't angry anymore, so he steals all of his stuff again, and then he sells it back to him. 
and that's how he gets <laughs> that's how he gets the money for the horse. It's like ridiculous. Um, I think I skipped to a bad bit because he's just solving a puzzle here. Let's keep going. Oh yeah, and he fights a dragon at one point. I never actually completed this game, so I don't know what's happening. But yeah, I know that I've, I've never played it myself. But... It's like it's so open ended, and I'm sure they figured out like right, you need to do this in order to be able to do this, in order to be able to do this, in order to be able to do the ending. So they probably just watch like four cutscenes with dragons in it, and then do the final boss or something. But yeah, this is pretty cool. So if anyone's never seen a Skyrim speedrun before, but you've played this game, you should watch it. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, there's at one point he's going up a hill of a horse. Yeah, here it is. This is pretty funny. Like obviously a good old cliff horse from this game. So he's like just <laughs> clipping into the ground as he's going up this hill on a horse. This isn't like. <laughs> This isn't speedrun specific. I mean, I did this when I played it a little bit. Um, but not quite this glitchy. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's that's Skyrim. I thought that was pretty cool. Alright. Uh, pretty good pretty good run, yeah. Yeah, I mean, considering the leaderboard has 67 times, it's pretty good to get record in it. I, re I remember earlier on there being talk that Skyrim was a really boring run. But uh, it might not be... <laughs> Maybe. Like that was years ago, and now all this stuff has been found, I guess. And yeah, they and probably have purchase. loads of rules to make it more interesting. Maybe. Right, this next game is Bastion. Uh, this is New Game Plus any percent. Uh, so I imagine, I think I've played this game a bit. I've probably completed it. And New Game Plus means you get to keep all your weapons and stuff. So. It lets I know there's like certain glitches you can only do with certain weapons, so I imagine New Game Plus is the more fun category. If I have a look, I think there was a problem with New Game any percent. Oh no, eighty times. Okay. Well, anyway, this is New Game Plus record. Um, this guy posted a New Game Plus any percent and a New Game Plus ASL and ASL. The all, all something levels or something like that? No, Wasn't that the duping? I think it's like duping, the rules say. It says dupl duplicate upgrades on weapons are prohibited. Um, mm. But I think that might be for any percent. That's for any percent as well. Our story oh, story levels, yeah. yeah. It's the one where you don't dupe a certain item yeah. and that unlocks like... The, the last level, level or something. The, I thought we talked the, about this earlier. Yeah, it says core slash shard duplication is prohibited. So they got a time in New Game Plus any percent and New Game Plus uh, all the story levels, which is pretty interesting that they managed to beat both records. I don't know if they found some new tech or if they're the only person actively running it, but there's a, these leaderboards aren't exactly empty. Like Especially New Game is pretty big. And this is a popular speedrun that I know of, so... So these are some good runs. I haven't been able to watch them. He just like, did he just fall off the map to skip a cutscene or something there? <laughs> that was weird. Uh, uh. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, that's that's Bastion. Uh, probably a game a lot of people know about, and there's a new record, and the speed run's pretty good. There wasn't too much this week, so I had to pick lots of other stuff. <laughs> uh. Oh, S, you know, surely know this one, right? Portal 2. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Kuka might even know a little bit about this. Yeah, this is the only game I've played on this uh, records list. Okay, good. Oh, well. <laughs> you can talk about this one, then. Me? Oh, um, I actually <laughs> I played it quite a lot back when it got released. And it's, it's a really good and fun game. It's, it's a really good speedrun, too. Mm. It's um, definitely longer than Portal 1, but it's still a very 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 good run and actually this um new record is quite significant because he beat the uh, like the previous record was over a year old let me see when that was when he got that previous record was done on oh almost two years old now even oh wow so, yeah Peroculus. Yeah. Know, beast at it. <laughs> yeah. Is there a reason that this game isn't run as much as the original Portal? Is um, it just the length? Or the glitch that's a good question. I mean, there is quite a, a few runs of this, right? Um, I don't know. 
to be honest. Yeah, 83 for single player, single segment, full game. Yeah, I remember um, Peroculus being in second place um, like ever since that PB for um, from Zonokas. Um, but Zonokas was just like an absolute beast, I guess, and no one could beat him. But Peroculus was always close, I, I felt, and Mm. Uh, it still took like two years. Maybe he took a break as well. I'm not sure about that, but it still took over two years because he, he has been at it, of course, like since before uh, Zonokas' uh, PB. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see him finally uh, finally get this. So uh, well done to Perokalos. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, um, <laughs> Poudnet says that he's been grinding this for ages. Um Apparently, MHMD used to have a world record for Paul, too. I didn't know that. No, that's for Bastion. Oh, Bastion. Oh, right, of course. The, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I guess the, the cutscenes, the length. Uh, I don't know. So, yeah. I have a question for Cool Kids, right? Oh, um, sure. You, do you know how to bunny hop in this game? I think so. Oh. So, so how similar or different are the bunny hopping techniques uh, from this game versus like Quake and Half Life? I would say they're they're quite different. They're not they're not alike. Um, actually, it's kind of strange the air strafing in this game. I don't really recall it since I haven't played it in years or done like stuff with this game in years, but it. It, it is different for sure. They're not comparable, and you don't go as fast in this game. You um, you're as straight from bunny hopping. Mm. But it's it, it's an important technique for high level speedrun. Yeah, yeah. I remember it, it took me months to like get someone good at uh, bunny hopping in this game. Didn't you used to play this co-op speedrun? Yeah, this is this is actually the game that got me into speedrunning. Oh right, okay. And I'm not sure if, if like the bunny hopping, it's uh, it was like a completely new technique to me because it's it's fairly technical, and uh, you know it takes a really long time to get down, especially to someone whose first speedrun would be this. Yeah, yeah. I'd mm. say it's 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 a very difficult run. That's what I want to add as well. That's why there is such such a big gap at the top of this game, like between the times. Like you have two top times on the leaderboards, and then there's sort of a gap down to the third person, and then there's a gap down to four and five and mm. six. I know it's just a really difficult speed run. Yeah, I I see that because there's a lot of tricks in here and a lot of of skips that are like unique to one specific level as well. Um, yeah. Is is that a reskin? Why has he got like a, a potato waffle? <laughs> Instead of a, a potato. I guess, yeah, the portal runners, they are known for uh, for like changing the texture on the portal gun, and that's allowed because it's just a texture anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I've never seen the waffle model being changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, cool. I'll have to yeah. watch this sometime. I mean, portal, you know, the original was obviously optimized to death. And... Yeah. It's a shame this isn't as much, but it's, if it's a lot harder and longer, that makes more sense, I guess. Yeah. All right, cool. Moving on to GTA Five One Hundred Percent without mission skips. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you were rooting a hundred percent of GTA Five, right? Yes. Yeah, I rooted like the first ten minutes of a hundred percent buff, which is also like all the collectibles that don't count towards the percentage. Okay. But um, yeah, one hundred percent without mission skips means that you don't fail a mission three times and then press the skip button, uh, which isn't even a glitch. It's just an intended mechanic that they added for the people who aren't very good at gaming, I guess. All those um, people that aren't good at gaming that play GTA Five, man, they all just yeah. want the story. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, in any case, that, like, using that makes the speedrun a bit dull, so 100% without doing that. Um, as for 100% itself, 
Um, oh, I just got word from um, from the guy who I uh, messaged from Aspect. Anyways, a hundred percent involves doing all story missions, a bunch of side missions, not all of them, just a bunch. Um, it makes sense, like why some are. Um, Part of 100% why some aren't, and then uh, like half the collectibles for some reason. Um, Interesting. Actually, uh, um, the fact that there's only half the uh, the stunt jumps required, right? It makes routing fairly interesting, I guess, because not only have you uh, do you have to figure out when you would do a unique stunt jump, you would also have to figure out which ones you would do. So mm. I, I see routing for this still being very interesting. I don't know how much time they spent on the route. Um, but um, I think Torex, who, who got this racket, uh, he, he's been spending a while on it, I think. So I, I know that uh, the route that Nord once uses, used, like long ago, wasn't very, like, wasn't very optimized. So, but I think they improved it uh, a bit now. Okay. So, uh, I'm hoping to see this time go uh, come down, and then I can steal threats for my uh, 100 plus. Uh... Oh, is that what you call it? 100 percent plus, is it? Yeah, it... like uh, some people would say true 100 percent, but you know what does true actually mean? Because yeah. wouldn't the counter being at 100 percent mean true? Like... So I just call it 100 percent plus. It should be in game 100 percent and 100 percent. <laughs> Or something. I guess. But then you have to like then you, the the real one hundred percent has to have the subtitle to it, so I guess that's not as good. Yeah, um, so it's just gonna be yeah, in game one hundred percent and one hundred percent plus. Better one hundred percent. That's actually not bad. Uh, yeah, okay. Depends because like some of the better one hundred percent objectives would be maybe considered dull. Like, yeah. it has the mission in it where you have to run through the desert in your Epsilon ropes for five mm. miles, which takes, like, ten minutes. And, like, being the weirdo I am, I actually enjoyed that mission. It's actually <laughs> fun for routing as well. It's, like, the only mission that I've properly routed so far. Um, uh, because it's just collectible fast, right? But, uh, like, a lot of people just thought that was a dull mission. Mm. Uh I mean, so I'm not sure if that would be in better 100%. <laughs> like this is already 12 hours long. Like mm -hmm. the 100% GTA games always seem so long to me. Like you know maybe not Vice City or Free now, but every other yeah. one is really long. And this mm. it still impresses me that people can play games for this long like decently. Yeah, it's it, and that's why I like 100% um, a lot more in GTA because you know just compared to any percent time of a GTA to it's 100% uh, time, and you know it just there's so much content that just goes into those additional hours, and mm. I thought that content actually made GTA fun. Which yeah. is why I'm not a big fan of doing any percent because you leave out all the stuff that makes GTA fun to me. Yeah, of course you also leave out stuff that isn't as fun, such as paramedic and the five mile walking mission. But it's it's uh, it's a nice trade off to me. All right, cool. So yeah, that's GTA Five. I know. Yeah, Talkers has spent like a lot of time pra routing and practicing. Apparently, according to this is confusing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh... Moving on, the last game for this week. Oh, hey, it's Mass Effect 2. <laughs> and another really popular game that I'm really surprised doesn't have more runners. Like, yeah. any percent New Game Plus, which is, for some reason, the default category, with no DLC. Wait, where's this? Oh, with DLC, I want. Yeah, these will have, like, free runs. Like, that's yeah. really surprising. So Mass Effect 2, I think, is the most well-received game of the three Mass Effects. Okay. So yeah, it's interesting how how there's so little runs. Um, so yeah, people get on it. Anyways, I should probably read out the the response I got for Mass Effect One why that was beaten real quick. Okay, go on. New stuff was found like two years ago. <laughs> That's um, not I guess I guess no one has done a run with that then. I didn't like NG Plus, so I never tried to get World Record. This is from the guy who currently has second place in um, in Mass Effect until Wymon came back this week. Uh, and I grabbed it quickly before Wyman demolished it. So Wyman right. went to to get it and like let his words decided to like cash in on it real quick just to say I had it for like one day. 
Uh, I still don't like NG Plus, so I probably won't try to beat his time. So, um, yeah. Cool. That explains Mass Effect 1. As for Mass Effect 2, I only found out like an hour before the podcast started. So I don't know much about it, to be honest. By Tentacle Pie, did they do. <laughs> they've only done Mass Effect 2. So. Yeah. They've also beaten the new game category, I think. So I'm going to guess this is going to be a similar story where stuff was found long ago and no one just did a run with it. Yeah, that probably sounds But that's, great. of course, a guess. But, uh, yeah, I hope to see um, these people, uh, Wymon and Tactical Pie, uh, bring this time uh, down a bit. Yeah, especially, for, like, I, I'll say that again, like, this is really popular series. I really thought this would be, like, way more popular for speedruns, too, but... I don't know what the as speed far as I like. know, um, Mass Effect Two isn't as broken as Mass Effect One, so I I, I couldn't be wouldn't be able to tell you any any glitches or sorts. Uh, yeah. What, what about Mass Effect Three? Does that have any runs? Speed run is... on loading. Here we go. Mass Effect Three. Uh, oh, this category thing's a bit weird. It's, again, it's like two to three runs for every category. Mm. And one of them doesn't have any runs. There you go. Free World Record S. You like Mass Effect. <laughs> New game insanity. Go. I, um, I've i only played through Mass Effect once in the series. It was fun, but it's definitely not something I want to speedrun yet. Because this is a game with, I feel, a really high replay value. So I'm going to have to do a bunch more casual playthroughs before I am even done with it. Okay. So no speedruns from me anytime soon. Sorry, man. Oh, man. All right, and with that, we are done with one minute 30 ahead. Nice. <laughs> all right, so if we move on from... That was all the records from this week that we could find. Uh, some of them we added at the last minute, like Mass Effect 2 and GTA 5. <laughs> uh, but that's that. So if we move on to uh, AGQ recap, I guess we'll start with you, Cool Kid, since you were actually there out of the free. <laughs> so r run down the whole thing like from you going there and submissions and whatnot i guess mm. tell you tell your story <laughs> my story well left on the i went there on the seventh left home at like 5 a.m to catch a bus to the airport and <clears throat> sorry i still have a bit of the gdq flu <laughs> uh but yeah i started my trip but like i left home like 5 a.m go to the airport uh, some of my, well, like my first flight was delayed by a bit because the weather was rough, so like ice, snow. Mm. But all right, so I got on my first flight to Copenhagen, and while I was in Copenhagen, just sitting waiting for my flight to DC, Washington DC, I, I hear someone say my name, like Cool Kid, is that you, Cool Kid? <laughs> and I look up and I see, you know, the Mexican runner like next to me. Oh because wow! He, because we are apparently on the same flight. So that was cool. We, you know, we didn't sit next to each other, but on the flight, but we kept each other company on the way to mm. the event through immigration and customs and such. So that was cool. Nice. And then, um, I don't know, the event itself, I don't know, it's, it was a lot of fun. As, I don't know, as always. Mm. Uh, this is my, my, fir my third AGDQ, and I don't know, it feels like they, I don't know, the events just, they get, I don't know, they improve each year, I would say, like with, um, in all aspects, like, um, we have like plenty of room to do like side stuff, like, uh, like there, are, I don't know how to describe it really, but, uh, things just get more professional each year. So nice. with... That's good. Uh, so would you like, so the side rooms, what have you got? Cause you've got like a casual room practice room yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a practice room there is a food room there's a board game room there is a well the practice room is divided into two parts there's a part with tvs where you can also borrow consoles and controls and such from mm. world 9 gaming oh okay and then there was also yeah, a pc section in the practice room where there are like 20 PCs that uh, anyone can use. I mean, I saw a lot of people. I mean, I was practicing Quake there, but there's a lot of people just playing casual games there as well, like a lot of people. 
logging into World of Warcraft, doing the daily quests and such, <laughs> while being at HDQ. But um, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and then there, there was also a casual room, and then sort of like a tournament room, which I, I never went into, but I think a lot of people played Smash and such there. Mm-hmm. And then Makes there's sense. a an arcade room with like arcade cabinets, it's like mostly rhythm games, but also a couple of fighting games and like retro arcade games like Mario Bros and Galaga and Pac-Man. And then there was the stream room, which is a, I don't know, giant thing. It looks massive, yeah. yeah it is huge. Oh, okay, cool. It that's, is. That's a lot of stuff. I mean, how many people attend? Like, I, can't, I don't. Is that that much to fill with just speedrunners? Or is it non speedrun people there as well? I would say, like, maybe a little. More than half of the people who attend, I feel like, aren't necessarily speedrunners, but just speedrun fans or gaming fans in general, or just like people who like to attend the events. I don't know, gaming events. Yeah, a lot of. Yeah, but there, are, like, just about anyone goes to HDQ. I feel like there are more sort of like casual visitors. Mm. <clears throat> but. Um, yeah, there are, I think there are about 1,600 attendees this year. That's a lot, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's turning into like an expo, I guess. Like, how long do companies start bringing, like, they have a room for, you know, demos or whatnot? Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That's what it feels like with, you know, um, you know, with the, like, arcade section they have now. It's yeah. Not, it's not GDQ who... Uh, set up the arcade room. It's like Tokyo Attack. Yeah. Like the, I oh know they have like, they uh, work with like certain companies to help them set up like the arcade room and like the like consoles and such. And there's also like a pinball section where you can play pinball. Wasn't that streamed as well, Pinball Joe? It, yeah, it was. Yeah. It was pinballed. Nice. Uh, pinball streamed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So have you participated but 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 participated in 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 any of the uh, pinball tournaments or anything like that? If I did? Yeah. No, I I'm terrible at pinball. Well I'm not even sure how you how you like I don't I don't even know what to do in order to improve <laughs> pinball. Like I just play and I Yeah, I die and I, I don't seem to improve the more I play it. Yeah. What about um, any of the other tournaments? Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, so people, I mean, this goes for you know ESA as well or any event. People host a lot of tournaments like backstage, mm-hmm. um, and this year I participated in one badminton tournament. Well, not real life badminton, but in badminton, and it's a badminton game on NES called Super Dynamics Badminton, and it's an amazing game. <laughs> Six some people enter it, and I happen to win. So oh, nice! It's good. <laughs> what? <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> oh my! And uh, I didn't really participate in that many tournaments. Fortunately, I participated in a Wind Jammers tournament. Not sure if you guys have heard of that game. No. Maybe you have. But it's sort of like a mix, a game that's mixed between volleyball and frisbee. Okay. Right. <laughs> didn't do well in that tournament uh, oh partially yeah. yeah, i can cool. i can see a fee, see the sorrow on his face and hear it in his voice like i shouldn't have joined that i shouldn't have talked about it just now <laughs> well the thing is there were there was a wind jammers like wind jammers was set up in the arcade room so i got in like week i practiced it all week then when i played the tournament i i don't know i lost two straight games and i was out i just um, I just didn't get to show my game. It's brutal. Did you get unlucky with who you had to play against in the first two oh. rounds. Yeah, that's probably it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's let's say so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And one thing I'm interested in is like when whenever I go because I've only ever been to ESAs, but whenever I go to ESA, 
I never, very, very rarely watch the actual stream. Like, did you find that? Like, were there, were there projectors of the stream in every room or something? Or did people just not really care that much? There were, there was, there were some projectors. Like, there's a projector in the uh, the practice room with the TVs. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's also a projector in the food room. I don't know of any other projectors, but I really... I sort of have the same approach at HQ as I do in, in ESA, and I pretty much only watch like my friends' runs. Yeah. Whenever like I have a friend, or someone I know of, who does a run in order to you know, I know, be a, you know, support yeah. them, you know. Mm -hmm. mm. But then there are also, um, hold on, excuse. There we go. And uh, there are also uh, there are not some like very exciting runs that you sort of feel like happen more frequent, frequently at a GDQ compared to an ESA. Like, say, for example, like is, like any Super Metroid race at GDQ is mm. um, you know, a very high-tension thing that I, I, I try to catch live, like watch there in the stream room. Mm. But I don't really watch, like, John runs in general like hop in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The atmosphere seems, seems really good, especially at moments... Uh... Like where something intense happens, like um, like you break the milestone for two million or something, uh, and like uh, stuff like that. It's just it just seems like a really nice moment to be in the room. Yeah. And then all stuff like uh, you know that whole Undertale realm with with the the goat hugging. That just seems <laughs> like, like a really good moment to be in the room. Were you there for the for that? I I was not there. I, uh, uh, I think I was playing wind jammers actually. <laughs> I, I, that was that was when the tournament was occurring. It was after you no, know, they played. There was Super Metroid, and then there was Undertale, and the tournament was um, during Undertale, I think. Okay. Oh wow. So I should have just skipped the tournament, man. That was. Yeah. Uh, How, what, what kind of timing that is on the tournament? Well, we we didn't really plan it, and we, we was like. All right, we have to we have to have a tournament, right? Let's just do it now because the event was ending next day. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> okay, yeah. All right, but yeah. Awesome. And you weren't the person in the audience shouting Waluigi during. No, wow. I, I was not. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I, I sat right. next to some people who were very doing it very loudly, though. Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't actually watch Super Metroid or Undertale yet, so I don't know. I don't know the good and the bad audience. But I um, I've heard things. Yeah, I, I watched the start of Super Metroid, but um, it's it's just not a game that I enjoy watching. So I, mm. I kind of phased out, and I I got all the the stuff. You know, you know, you heard what happened. Yeah. I caught it, but um, like not really. In, like I wasn't really conscious when I caught it, so I was like, oh yeah, just some some guy, right? He said something, but apparently it really killed the mood. Um, but I, I I didn't really notice. And then for Undertale, I looked it back the end of the run um, because it's also not like I, I watched the start of it a bit, and it also didn't really really grab me. Mm. Um, but I watched the end, and it was like so hype, and it, it seems really fun to to be in the room at that moment. Like that was. Kind of wishing I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard a lot of good things about Undertale. I heard everyone was like, oh, it saved the end of the marathon and crap like that on Reddit. But, yeah. yeah I, I haven't been able to watch either Super It, it, it was Undertale. certainly a good, a really good um, finisher. I must okay. say that did really well with putting that for the finale. That's good because they worked hard to get Undertale into the, the schedule, yeah. they, considering the dev didn't even want them to for the previous years. <laughs> But yeah, but the dev was supported now. I think they donated uh, a lot as well, oh, the dev. Good. So, uh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right. Do you do anything else interesting at HDQ? Re interesting? Uh, nothing at all, really. I didn't really go outside the event. I was just there in the hotel for an entire week. So. Do people go uh, outside the hotel a lot? Uh? Uh, they do. There is, I mean, there are a lot of people who going to uh, the capital, Washington, mm. D.C., for example, for like a day. I didn't go there this year, but I've done it in the past, and it's, um, you know, yeah. it's interesting. Mm. I'm thinking of like taking AGDQ um, in 2018, just so I can tack on like a, like one or two days of D.C. 
Because yeah. it does seem like a nice city to, to just check uh, yeah. out, right? And like some people told me, go to SDDQ instead, right? But I'm like, that's in Minneapolis. And like, what the fuck is Minneapolis? Like, I'm, <laughs> I know it's a big city, you know. Like, you never hear about it. And you then DC, it. you know, it's DC, of course. Mm. So um, I'm going to try going to the SDDQ um, in 2018. Yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. If I was going to make the trip to America, I'd want to actually do a bit of sightseeing. And not just yeah, stay inside. Certainly. Mm. Alright, cool. Yeah, I, I yeah, I definitely recommend attending at least one GDQ just to see what they're experience what they're like. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. I've I've heard so many things about GDQ, good, bad. And I just want to see for myself now. Mm -hmm. How how would you compare or, or if if even A G D Q or A G D Q to ESA? Or would you just say that's apples and oranges? Uh Pretty much, I mean the really the um, largest dif lar biggest difference is like the people attending. I mean, um, GDQ are mostly Americans, and I don't know it's. I really like meeting like my American friends and speedrun friends because I really do get to meet them. <laughs> That's like the only yes. mm -hmm. the only time or like part of the year that I'm able to actually meet them. So, and ESAs are you know. I mean, uh, amazing f thing itself, you know, from the way it's being ran and the people attending. So it's really, they're hard to, they, I, I can't really compare the two events, really cannot, but I really do like both. So, all right. That's cool. cool. I will definitely, I have to try to go to one sometime, but I don't know if I'll ever get the opportunity to. But Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. All right, then. Um, but yeah, previously in the last episode, me and S recapped what we watched of what was at that point half of the event. So I guess mm -hmm. if we go through the other half of the runs we watched, uh, yeah. did you, you say you didn't want in the streaming room that much. Did you watch much then, talk it, if, like with other people, for of your friends, like you said? Or? I watched maybe... 10 to 15 runs in total. Okay. Uh, no, not many. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, do, did you make a list, S, or...? I, yeah, I didn't watch many either, but um, for the ones that I did watch, uh, yes, I yeah. did write down. I, I missed a lot, um, and I was trying mm. to catch up on everything, which is why I haven't got to the end of the marathon yet, because... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because unfortunately, the way it works is that all the good stuff is at night in America, which is like super night here or morning. Yeah. So I'm never awake. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate. Um, all right. If I just if I go through the list of stuff I thought was noteworthy, that was after when we last talked about it. Mm, um, that was after the Pennsylvania block, right? Yeah. Yeah. The first thing I watched was a uh, human fall flat. Was... And, and my note says, what is this? I think that's like a, a weird game. That was. Well, actually, yeah, I actually did see that as well. Since yeah, well, um, What is I, it? I have no idea. But I was... <clears throat> okay, so the, the stream is available on the hotel TVs. Like you can watch the stream from the hotel TV. There's a channel for it. So I was waking up on, I don't know which day this was, but I was waking up and the TV was on and that run was like just starting. That's all I and then yeah. I, I know I watched the game and looked silly, but fun. Really. Yeah, it looks like that, a, sorry? It's human fall flat. And human you play as a flat. human, I guess. Yeah, human uh, colon fall flat. I've never heard of this and I didn't Yeah, see you need it. a you play as a human and you have to do puzzles or something. And it seemed broken. <laughs> <laughs> I could see, so I'm, I'm, I couldn't tell you what the game actually is, but it's, it seems like he just um, did a bunch of skips. Well, it seems like it's, it's like a physics game. Yeah. It's a game based on like physics and uh, yeah, puzzles, like physics. Mm -hmm. But he was just able to climb on walls and he had skip most. It seemed. I didn't really see him do any of puzzles at all. Oh, right. <laughs> it's oh, like yeah. very like rag dolly. Mm, yeah, it seemed like it seemed like a fun game, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Did you um, watch anything uh, before that, uh, Josh? Yeah, I watched a few things on uh, Thursday, 
Uh, I think it was Thursday. Let me find the schedule. Thursday? Should be here. Yeah, th Thursday. I mean, I've noted it down as Wednesday because it was night. It was like midnight, past midnight for me. But I managed to watch uh, Halo 2. Um, I watched I've... the watch then, right? Yeah. Yeah, that, that was... At it was... o'clock. It was pretty good. I, I watched it after I rewatched it. I missed it. Uh, okay. it. It was pretty good. It was like um, just more Halo 2 stuff. That game is glitched. The original version, there's a sword flying glitch. So, like, there's a melee weapon. And you when you, uh, ma like, aim at someone, your reticle turns red to mean when you're in range. And the melee weapon has, like, a really short range. But when you're in range, if you attack, you, like, fly towards them. But there's a glitch where if you use a long-range weapon, like a sniper rifle or something, and aim at someone so the reticule turns red, then if you quickly... I don't know the inputs, obviously, but if you quickly switch weapon and then attack with the sword, the reticule's still red by the time you attack, and it still thinks you're like in range, so you fly all the way to them. And it's really ridiculous. It makes it, There's a lot of skips because of that in the run. Um like, at um, one point, there's, like, two gondola things which are moving past each other, and you're supposed to get to the bit just not quick enough to get the one that moves away, so you have to stand there, fight a load of enemies, and wait for the next one to come. But because of the sword, you can actually reach the first one that that moves, and, they didn't, and it's all, like, solid and everything, like, normal. But at, they the game, like, doesn't expect you to do that, so it sends a load of enemies on the other <laughs> gondola while you're just on an empty one that goes to the place. Um... But yeah, it was pretty good. There's also like, there was also the crowd interaction of the whole checkpoint thing that kept happening. Like, the the runner was getting a bit screwed. The way the checkpoints work in Halo is kind of weird. It's like random where it gives you a checkpoint at a certain point or not, and it kept like <laughs> failing a trick. And the checkpoint, the last one, was really far away. Um, oh. So that he kept getting he kept pointing out when a checkpoint or him or the commentator I don't remember kept pointing out when a checkpoint happened and then the crowd picked up on it and started shouting checkpoint every time a checkpoint happened <laughs> it was pretty funny it got, it got a little bit old but thankfully once it started getting old people stopped doing it mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that was fun but yeah I, I think I think it's shenanigans who was commentating that as well as the runner um, I, I need to find a link let me t I need to type I know it's loud halo 2 so if I see his face, I'll probably recognize him. Uh, so Krypton was the one that's running it, but mm -hmm. I think it's Shenanigans. I know him as a Pokemon runner, but he obviously knows about Halo as well. He, and his commentary, whenever I, like, there's certain people that I recognize, not because I know them, but just because I know, oh god, he's commentating it, this is going to be good sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like Belchy, for example, is really good commentary as well. But yeah, so that, that made a good run. Um... Then I got a note here that just says most of Thursday bad. Like, did did you guys see anything on Thursday that was actually interesting? Not me. No. I mean, I didn't see anything on Thursday, so oh. regardless of whether it was interesting or not. Well, I I watched most of Thursday and nothing got my interest. I don't think. Like, 007 Nightfire was okay. I didn't get to watch most of it. Legend of Korra was all right, but that's just because I watched the Legend of Korra. Um. And that was it. Oh, there was... No, that was another day. Okay, never mind. Oh, no, no, yeah. There was, in the evening, there was a Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut Big the Cat story. Donation incentive, which is hilarious. It's like there's a side character and his campaign is, like, really short. The run was seven minutes long. And you're playing as, like, a really fat character in a Sonic game that can't run. and You just fish. But the objective is to catch a frog in every level or something like that. I don't know. But it was really funny. Um, yeah, then Friday, you said you watched Human Fall Flat. Yes. Um, I watched Bleed and Fury by Studio, who's someone I vaguely know. Um, yeah. Those were okay. Bleed is like a, you know, this is like, this is like a graveyard shift, so they just put these two indie games in there. Fury is mm. a relatively new indie game that was cool, and Bleed is like a, a twin stick shooter thing that was pretty decent. Um, I action... also watched. Sorry, go on. Yeah, go. Okay. Uh, I watched the, um, the Star Wars runs myself, the Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. That's okay. the only other one I watched on Friday. Um, 
I, I tuned in at like a moment where he kept failing something. You know, you have these moments, right? So mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, this is going badly, right? But it seems to just be that part of the run that went badly. And then after that, he just showed us some ridiculous stuff. And nice. Uh, it was a good run, yeah. Okay. I'll, have to try, I'll add that to my list of stuff to watch. Because I was actually wondering whether to watch these Star Wars runs or not. Um. But yeah, I, I watched uh, before that. Uh, surprisingly, straight after Human Fall Flat, I watched Action Hank. Did you see that, S? Or not? No. Um, this is a this is a cool game. It's just like a pla- uh, modern-ish platformer. You play as like an action figure in some kid's room or something. But the point is, it's like a it's like an endless runner sort of game with designed levels. Um, and it was actually pretty interesting, like all the speed tech in it and stuff, and how they were just like constantly getting on top of the leaderboard and like getting a rainbow split in game every time because they just broke every single level it was pretty good um <laughs> metal slug free was cool just because that game's cool i didn't think the speed run was that great <laughs> uh then you got the good old contra block i didn't watch much of that ah but then what's the issue with mr k and um all these contra runners i think um, but I didn't watch the runs themselves. But I just wanted to give shout outs to these interviewers because I enjoyed those interviews. Yeah, they were actually surprisingly good. Didn't they try this either at HDQ or SGDQ last year and they were like pretty cringy, right? Yeah, no, I had no idea to be honest, but I okay. thought they were uh, really good. Uh, yeah. This year. Were... Look, at you've sat on like the receiving end of one of these interviews. What's, what's your experience yeah. with these interviews? Yeah, I. I got to do two, um, okay. one for a Mega Man and one for a Quake, and uh, I think they're 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 really fun. Like um, the way they're set up, like you, um, <clears throat> the way they're set up is that like the inter, say interviewer has like a couple of question and then questions, and then they're also uh, uh, they also got um, some questions from people who like tweeted. Mm. Like Games and Quick, like tweeted out, "Hey, is there anything you would like to ask this guy, our next uh, his interviewee?" And then people could like tweet in things they wanted, I don't know, to ask. Mm. But also, I, I don't know. I think they're they're really fun, like the like um, light-hearted interviews. Like, not. I mean, they're. I don't know. I feel like they're basically just for fun. Really, that's what yeah. I felt like as a runner. Yeah. They're just for. Just for entertainment purposes, while there is like setting up, um, like upcoming runs and such. Yeah, yeah I, I thought it was really good because they they had problems pre- previously with like setup times, um, and I imagine like while while these interviews are happening, you know, the tech is setting up the next game and stuff. It was it was actually really good. I actually look forward to the interviews that happened. They're all yeah. very good. Cool. <laughs> the They're setup pretty... at the time. Um... Well, maybe long, I don't know, but um, it was filled pretty well um, mm. with, with content, so yeah, good job on that. Yeah, even like the donation readers and stuff were mostly all pretty funny and good during the yeah. the dead bits when nothing was happening. Yeah, I, I made a note about that for the Wind Waker run. Um, I, I said like... Um, like the run itself, it was all right, right? But then the uh, the, the donation reading was just done really well, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And uh, it it just kept me going throughout that entire run. I watched like over half of it, I think. Oh right, <laughs> yeah. That, Combined that... with the part that it's at the end, and they were really pushing for that um, one and a half million uh, mark, right? So yeah. you know. And that combined with the donation reading, uh, it just it, it just got like really exciting. Yeah, I I, I watched a bit of that. Cause that's that's what I'm watching at the moment is the the vod, and yeah, it is. It's really interesting. Like, like the Wind Waker is such it is a really lucky thing that happened. They they reached this milestone that they could plug and get hype about during Wind Waker, which is a game with lots of high action sequences and then suddenly really dead bit for five minutes during a re- unstable yeah. cutscene and then you can just you know pile on all these donations and they were making like a game of it like how spike said something about anonymous anonymous donators and then a load of anonymous people donated and stuff <laughs> yeah it was pretty good interaction it was it was really good to watch and when they hit that one and a half million they surpassed the previous record it was pretty good yeah um 
But yeah, before Wind Waker happened, I was watching, uh, there was the Crash Bandicoot block, which is, you know, a, a game I like. I've I've actually done runs of both of these games that were done. Um, so the first one was Crash Bandicoot 2, Cortex Strikes Back, um, by Sword of Seals. And it was 100%, which is a good category. It was, <laughs> like, to, to go back on, like, bad moments of GDQ, I hate doing this, but, you know, the the whole like Crash Bandicoot 2, the kill myself runner or whatever that happened. Uh, from like last year was it or like even a year earlier? I think last year, yeah. But that mm. that happened because of a, lo- a massive combination of events. But one of them was picking any percent with death abuse as the category of choice. So I don't know what it was submitted, obviously, but but why they got that category, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Crash Bandicoot 2, a hundred percent, is actually a really good category of the game. The way it works. Um, and the commentary is actually pretty good. I don't remember exactly who was talking through most of it. I'd have to find a video. Let's uh, crash two. Um, but it was actually really interesting. Even though I like knew this game, I, I found this run pretty good. Yeah, it's sort of seals talking most of the time. So he explains like all of the, you know, the speed tech and stuff about it. And in my opinion, I really like these games. Obviously, you know, because I played them as a kid and did them. Um, but what surprised me is that behind him, there's loads of people crowded around. Like, I don't know if you can see, because it's probably really small for you, cool kid, but where the sofa is, there's, is there, like, an area behind where you can have, like, extended couch, like, extend, like, other friends and stuff? If, if there are, if there is? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, you can, um, yeah, I mean, you can have as many people as you want there is pack them all in so that yeah. they show up on the camera that's sort of what <laughs> like for a couple of runs uh, i did that that we did that like for the <clears throat> uh for the contra runs at least the first two ones like first one was a race between the mexican runner and toad but mm. two of runners i i know very well so i don't know i just like took a share like there were no shares there. I just took a share and like moved it right next to that area so I could sit and you know, okay, be there. And like I don't know a lot of people do that, but yeah, you can. It's really I like it. I like it. Like you can. It's good. It's yeah. good. Um, yeah, it's, it is good. It's because like for this, this is like the entire. I think they're called the Sprash. They call themselves community of like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. Um, I recognize a few people there, but from how I understand it, because they, like, sort of, I think, talks to them at some point, it's like the whole Crash Bandicoot sort of community that all, that went there, and they all crowded up on the couch for these two games. Yeah. yeah. And it was pretty it's... cool. Like, did they set the camera up specifically for that? Because I don't think in other games, the camera doesn't go, like, doesn't look up this high, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think they um, actually paid attention to that during the event as well. They changed the camera from time to time, like the angle, for example, you, for the Wind Waker run, um, they didn't show like behind the couch at all. They only had the camera pointed at the runner and uh, like the the front the couch, whatever yeah. you call it. Mm-hmm. So they did change, like sort of optimize that from run to run. Yeah, it was interesting. I, I think it was pretty good. Like it's just good camera work in general, right? And it, like encourages it gets around this whole like you know oh sorry I can't fit everyone on the couch thing yeah. just because there was a big area that everyone could just scooch up in it was pretty nice yeah yeah it's very nice like everyone you know is included there are not only you know like three or four people uh, who are like visible because they're on the front couch you know yeah. everyone can be there and support you don't have to be a uh, chosen like. You don't have to be chosen. You can just sure. I don't I don't know, go up there. Yeah, that's good. Actually, all right. Yeah, and then, then like the next one was uh, Crash Team Racing. Uh, again, they're using the same camera angle. All the same people are here for, for the Crash Bandicoot bit. Um, but yeah, this was a a really good run. Uh, Natty does pretty good ex- explanation. Um, I don't remember who the guy in the middle is. The guy he keeps passing to every time he has to do a hard bit. But I don't. I think they were like really nervous or something. I, I think I remembered who it was at some point. I can't remember now. But but yeah, the commentary is like pretty decent until like you know they, till Natty has to concentrate for a really difficult bit and then because there's not this back and forth conversation, it sort of goes a bit stale for those bits, and like the skips happen way too fast for them to explain what's happening, which is 
a bit <laughs> unfortunate but but for me this is a great run like natty is way better at this game than i am and this was pretty impressive to watch especially at a big event and a lot of people seem to like it like you know everyone's like oh my childhood and stuff when you see the skips and whatnot oh and this glitch as well this is great the language glitch it puts the wrong boss head on on the boss <laughs> like this mismatch let me find another one i think there's another one somewhere like yeah here you go this this one's the best one so this is oxide's head on a uh, finger dial uh there you go <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty funny um, yeah, the other one looked fairly normal to me but this one, yeah, yeah. They, they progressively get sillier it's great <laughs> Um, but yeah, anyway, yeah, it was it was pretty good. It was a pretty good run, and I like these games. Um, so yeah, I'd watch those if you were interested. Is there anything else anyone watched on Friday? Uh, uh, not on Friday, no. Okay. I think there were uh, there were some good race. I think uh, if you guys haven't seen it, you guys should watch the uh, the Ducktales race. Oh yeah. That was, on Friday. That was a very. It's a short game, and I know it's a very fun race and it was um uh blackie was doing commentary for it so mm. it's yeah it's overall a, a really good race yeah I, I did actually watch this that's a good point i think i noted this down yeah i did note it down I, I missed it um yeah like you said this was uh ducktales big race between two people um uh, yeah, two top close runners. was it was it a close race? It was really close. Like it uh, came down uh, to the spawning of the last bat in the last boss. It was ridiculous. Um, and yeah, Be Belchie's um, or Bletchy. How do you say his name? Blechie? I think most people say Blicky. I think Blechie. that's uh... okay. Well, yeah, Blicky's commentary is obviously you know should be legendary at this point. Like he, he killed it. every single time I saw him. It was like always amazing commentary. Um, yeah, he's really good at that. But yeah, this this run, I, I think I was busy at the time. I only caught the end of it, but the end is so amazing. I won't play it to spoil it, but you should probably watch this run. It, it was good, like Cool Kid said. Um, yeah, we missed that one. That one was good. Uh, yeah, other than that, there was, I mean, I was there American time, so they were still playing, like doing the uh, Donkey Kong Country re relay on Friday, and the that was kind of cool. I didn't really. I didn't really watch it. I only, only caught the end, but it was a bit. Is sitting in that room for over two hours a bit too much for my liking? But <laughs> yeah, I didn't get to see it's good. that. Um, it, was, it was kind of late, like three a.m. or two a.m. your time. Yeah, it's three three seventeen my yeah. time. Yeah, two a.m. for me. Yeah. All right, I'll note that down for a watch as well. Um, this is what normally happens after GDQ. Is I go through it and find what everyone thought was good and try to watch it. Mm. Yeah, it's really cool because they had um, well they were playing all three games and they had uh, three different teams so there were three teams racing each other in this trilogy race hmm. that was cool. good speaking of runs that everyone thought was really good yeah. um, apparently our very own GTA friend Casey Frew had like one of on the most well, if not the most well received runs of like the entire marathon. Yes, yes. I didn't he watch did. it. <laughs> did did you yeah. did you say you didn't watch it or you did? I have not gotten around to it yet. I okay. was early today, I had hmm, I have time to watch back one run. <sighs> and I was Hitman instead. <laughs> Alright. Um I will say I didn't think it was incredible, right? So what I think's happened is that when I watched this, I was like, oh, it's KZ Fru playing Vice City. That's I watch this every day sometimes. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's it, me as well. That's why I haven't actually watched it yeah. yet. Yeah, his, his commentary is very good. Like, he explained... The thing everyone was talking about is he explains the story as well as what's happening. Um, mm. And as someone that's done that myself from ESA, it's because during the driving bits, you have nothing else to talk about, so you talk about the story. And he did a good job of it. He, he does a really good job of commentary. Um and I think everyone else loved it as well because Vice City is pretty broken and everyone was losing their minds. But <laughs> for me, it was just like, oh, this is just another Vice City run KZ Fru talked over it. It's, yeah, it's exactly. totally normal to me. But that just like that just says how good KZ Fru is a commentary, I guess. Like, <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, it, it was... That's it. Hmm? 
I'll definitely watch it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just another fight event. Yeah. Me, yeah. I mean, you still feel like it. You still should. It wasn't exactly bad. It, it was really good. Um, but just not mind blowing like it was for everyone else. Like when he kills Lance, I think everyone like laughs and stuff. <laughs> but because me and you have like done this before, it's not as impressive, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, Casey, Casey did a really good job. I mean, he obviously did something right. If everyone, well, like ninety percent of people I see said this was the one of the best runs in the marathon. So yeah, so yeah, that's cool. Shame it was a ass o'clock for us and yeah, not very good o'clock for America because because. GTA, I guess they want to mm, play it late. Yeah. I was still at a fairly decent time, I'd say, like around midnight, I think, for okay. American time. So, and which is like on the east coast, on the west coast, it's gonna be even earlier. So, oh, okay, that's I, right, then. It, I, I think it's a good time for like um, a run like a game like GTA, which isn't fairly friendly, family friendly. Yeah, yeah. It, it makes sense why this always happens. It's just a shame. I, I think this is like the best time I could have put it, uh, in yeah. my opinion. You can't put it like any other time because at yeah. some point, like, you're going to get to the point where it's like, oh, the Europeans are awake now now we're offending all those children instead. Like, mm, Yeah, I, I don't think that's something I took in consideration. That's like, on fr this was on Friday night. So, yeah, it was like, the pick is just over, right? And, uh, like people tune in for ADDQ and they see this run. Mm. Yeah, it was pretty good. Mm. All right. So, yeah, definitely watch that if you haven't. Uh, is there anything else? Like, I watched Super Mario 3D Land because I woke up for that and it was pretty decent. Um, I missed Legend of Zelda Minish Cat, though, and I better note that down. <laughs> I didn't catch anything until the Taz block. Oh, yeah, the Taz block. Did you go? Uh, did you see that uh, cool kid? Were you there? I saw some from the practice room, but I didn't really <clears throat> pay attention to it, to be honest. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom. I wanted to. <laughs> I wanted to watch that as well. because uh, that sounds like a funny game. Hopefully, the commentary was good. But yeah, the. Yeah, it, it's it's actually yeah, from what I heard, anyways. That's a really good run, actually. Yeah. It's not just like. Yeah, I think I said this before, but like you'd think like a, a game based on a TV series, a kids' TV series, maybe uh, it's probably not going to be good. But apparently, this is a really good game and a really good run. So yeah, yeah, I have to watch it. All right, but yeah, the 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 Taz block was pretty decent. Um, the Taz bot versus Nez Classic was good when they you know managed to play Gradient and they explained why it was even harder on Nez Classic, but they got it to work mm -hmm. that time. Um, but it was just an auto-scroller Taz, so it wasn't too impressive. It wasn't fun yeah. fast. It was just, oh, he's doing lots of funny shapes and stuff. That's great. It went on mm -hmm. for a little bit too long. Like At one yeah. point when someone said, oh, should we end it here? And the other guy was like, no, let's do one more level. I was like, no! <laughs> um, and then they had the... Uh, what was it after that? Super Mario Brothers? That was interesting because they get they get like a runner of the game to come and try and commentate what's happening on the Taz. <laughs> so what happened at the start of Super Mario Bros was they set up, uh, you know, arbitrary code execution with load of shell positions and stuff right at the start. And then I can't remember actually what they did for Super Mario Bros exactly. Um, but then they did the same thing for Mega Man One, mm. which are both NES games. And then they did the same thing for A Link to the Past, which is a SNES game. Like, they did arbitrary code execution and, you know, did what they want on the screen. But for A Link to the Past, they set up a little video box thing, right? Like a full mm -hmm. motion video or whatever they called it back then. Um, and then in that box, they then played the Portal Taz. Yes. Which was the community choice. And that was like really impressive. And what was happening, um, what was happening was that like, they're playing back a Taz from the laptop and feeding it into the the Taz bot, which then feeds it into the SNES. Yeah, yeah. yeah it fed it into the controller or something, and it yeah, just sent. I forgot how many inputs per second it was, but it was a ridiculously high number. Yeah, like I imagine, since they had they had like what four controllers plugged in because they were using like expansions, I think. 
Mm -hmm. um, so they had like what one? How many buttons are on a SNES controller? <laughs> like how how many how many ones or zeros did they have? Like I don't know the polling rate of a controller, but anyway, obviously how they've done it is they've they 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 got an eight uh, arbitrary code execution to run, and then they the payload they sent to the the console was a like a, a video playback, which takes the video or probably it was just pictures actually like frame like video like video in the sense of like lots of pictures in every frame is a video and they sent like the pictures through the console's in uh, controller inputs which is really cool yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, i now really liked when when they explained it at the very end like yeah uh, he, he, at first you're like uh, what, what the hell right yeah and um then they had that skype call going on i think <sighs> yeah but a skype um but uh, yeah, I, I thought that like um, like after a while, right? You it, it, it felt like it was kind of done, right? But then they started revealing how they did it, and like that just blew my mind. Mm. That was interesting. Yeah. So what what happened was that the two previous NESs that they had got arbitrary code on execution on before were on two different televisions, and they were both still running. One of them mm. was being used for left side audio. The other one was being used for right side audio, and they were feeding that through the controller inputs of two NESs. So they had left and right audio on two NESs, and then the video on a SNES. And they were like capturing it all at the same time, putting it onto the stream like that. And they showed, mm. at the end, they showed the multi picture view of like this is what the, both the NESs are doing as well as the SNES. And it was pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I will say the. The last two Taz's they did, like the portal Taz, you couldn't really see what was happening because it was played for a SNES. The other Taz they did, you couldn't really see what was happening because it was for a SNES. I think it was Super Mario 64, right? Um, mm. And then and then everyone was losing their mind because they're like, how are you playing these games on a SNES? And then they did Skype. But it, the thing is, all of those three things were all done exactly the same way, which was the laptop yeah. just in a little box had what was supposed to be shown in it, and then it was fed to the snare, so they were all the same. Um, but it was still really cool to watch, obviously. I'm not yeah. taking away I mean, the, yeah, the, the test itself, like the SM64 and the portal test, they were impressive. I wonder, yeah, if people were actually able to follow what was going on. But Yeah. Um, it was really cool seeing uh, Juxpa's uh, test being played back in the... Uh, I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that was amazing. It was much better than previous times, because I think the last few years, I didn't think it was that great, the Taz box. Um, but this year, it was really good. Um, and then after that, they had Dark Souls 3 uh, by Bubbles, which apparently didn't go very well. He had, like, yeah. game crash. It was... It was like one bit, I was watching it, it was like one bit where it's like, all right, and sometimes the game can crash here, and immediately on cue, the game crashes. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, it's fine, I have backup saves. And then he tries to find where his backup saves is, and he can't, so they have to, like, cut off while he, like, goes to get a USB stick or something. I don't know what happened, but... Mm, yeah. And then he manages to resume the run, manages to finish it, which I think is more impressive. Like, if something really bad happens like that, and you can still finish a run, it's pretty cool. Um, yes, cool. And then Wind Waker happened, which we were talking about already. Yeah. And then Super Metroid, which I didn't get to watch. Was it actually a good run? Or well, It was a good run. And it ended up being a very good race in the end. The top two times were only eight seconds apart. Damn. But the, uh, the other two runners are sort of on a different tier, so to say. Like, they aren't really close to... Uh, uh, the yeah. the PBs of the uh, the top two racers, so um, mm. it wasn't wasn't really unexpected that it would go that way, but it ended up being a really close race between the top two racers, so it was good in that regard. Yeah. So, Do you think it should have been a two player race instead, or it, it could? I mean, it might as well be in a two player race to be honest, yeah. considering how uh, how far apart the uh, the runners, runners were skill wise. I mean, not say skill wise, but at least in that category, one hundred percent, they were far apart at mm. the times. Okay. Who okay, came in second? Uh, a second. <laughs> I was thinking Zost being first place and a second. But uh, who came in second? Uh, Behemoth. Okay. Oh, the yeah. Second. Then uh, Wild Anaconda in third place. 
Well done, Anaconda 69. <laughs> All right. And then after that, we had Undertale, which we already touched on a bit, um, which none of us... Well, you watched it yesterday and said it was good, right? Yeah, I watched it, and it was, it was a good watch. The end, anyway. So I watched the beginning as well, and I fell asleep, but then I woke up for the end. Nice. But I didn't wake up for the end. I watched the end in a vault. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then that was the end. So, yeah, that was... That was long. That was holy crap. We were talking about that for like an hour. <laughs> so that yeah. was the GDQ recap. So overall, what are your feelings of the GDQ? We got two stream watchers and one attendee. Like, let's let's wrap it up. We'll start with attendee. I guess, gone cool kid. What do you think overall? Best, second best. <laughs> uh, it's definitely the. Not sure if it's the HDQ I had the most fun of. At, but it's definitely the best HQ I've been to. Okay. Let's put it that way. And uh, I've, I sort of feel motivated to try for SGDQ now. I haven't been to an SGDQ, but so I would, I don't know, like to try one, see what they're like. Mm. But um, yeah, I, I don't know, po- uh, po- uh, positive feelings about him. Okay. So I, That's good. Yeah. And what about US? Uh, well, this is the first GDQ, I think, that I properly followed, maybe not watched, but like followed what was going on since like ATDQ 2013. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I can't really compare it to like everything in between, but um, I thought this was, uh, this was very, very entertaining uh, indeed, and uh, uh, good production quality, maybe the audio not so much. But you you know whatever, um, yeah. it was it was certainly a very good um, very good stream I thought so yeah, well done is what I is, is what I have to say. Yeah yeah and I I mean I I watched every single one of these since 2013 and I think this is one really stepped it up again back into I don't I don't think they went backwards I think our expectations have just increased so much and I think this year production wise this was like actually met expectations and it was pretty good. Like, there were a few audio problems, but audio, like we've said before, is really complicated to do at these. Um, mm. More complicated than video is. But, yeah, I, I thought it was really good. I thought, the you know, the interviews in between and the shortish downtimes and, you know, the games yeah. were cropped correctly and the layouts were amazing. Like, when they the had, like, people's, really good, yeah. Yeah, people's tweets that came up on the screen when they were, like, asking questions to the interviewer and... And all the things mm. that like went through all the donation incentives and stuff, and what runs are coming up next and whatnot. It, yeah, it was the, really good. Yeah, yeah, really good uh, job on the layout um, and yeah, yeah, all of it was really. Hmm. All right then, so that was our GDQ recap. It was pretty good, is our review. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it was good. Just leave the pretty out. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. I mean the. Uh... Yeah, that's what really stood out for me as well. Like the intermissions this year were really, really good. Mm. The yeah. intermission screen and like the donation reading and the interviews and all. That was, um, they stepped it up in that department big time. Yeah. yeah. Sure. All right. So if we move on to In the Spotlight, when today's, oh, yeah. uh, well, this yeah. week's spotlight is Mega Man. So this is, I guess we'll start with since we didn't actually talk about it, your GDQ Mega Man run. Uh, I'll play it on the, the stream and you can give us your like overview of it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, it was a race. It was a four-player race this year. And... Uh, <coughs> whoops, sorry. Going into it, I was, you know, very... I was very excited to do this run, do this race. Uh, I've, you know, I've been preparing a lot for it, I grinded the game a lot beforehand, improved my PB, got the record. And there was a lot of expectations, not only for me, but from everyone at the event, you know, for this race. The room was packed and, I don't know, every, everyone was really excited about it. So that was that was a really, it's a really fun race. Um, yeah. I'm really glad I got to do it. Like, I got to do one of those, like, really sort of, exciting be part of one of those really exciting races but yeah it was really close between the first three and the fourth one would have been as well i think they fi- he finished like also in like the same time if it weren't for that soft lock he got yeah that was yeah. really unfortunate yeah. yeah 
But sure. um, that wasn't a really good race. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, like the random bit I clicked to, you're all on the same like freeze frame bef after the boss. <laughs> yeah, except him, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, there is a there's a risk of soft locked in game about like three and a half minutes into the run, which he did. Unfortunately, yeah. it's not very common to do it. Like it's easily avoidable, but it can also it can also happen. Like it can happen to anyone in any run. Mm. But you, but. Overall, like with this race, I'm not very pleased with my per performance. To be honest, I did some really silly things, but I mean, overall, it ended up being a really good race, like very entertaining one. So it was it was good in that regard. But sure, I, I would have liked to play better. But I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, like, I'm, I actually, if you wa keep watching, I'm doing, a, I'm doing a really silly thing here. It's one of the silly things I did. Right. So I'm in top left. I'm yep. gonna do a sip here at the end, but I mess up. I don't turn my turn left. I should turn left to start sipping. So instead, I don't. My character doesn't go anywhere. I jump to wrap the screen, but my character is just. I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do the sip. I, I like looked away from the screen because I assumed I did it. <laughs> so instead, so instead I just lost like five to six seconds doing. Yeah. That, that actually lost you the lead to just saw from the yeah. rest of the... <laughs> mm. huh. The things like that, really stupid things. I, mm. It's just, I don't know, just GDQ things, I suppose. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just happened to do what, really stupid stuff. Were you stuff. nervous at all? Or? I, was only I was only really nervous during uh, like the first two stages. Maybe it's even the first stage. But then I... Uh, I feel like I wasn't really playing my game. I was didn't really have a I didn't really have a good run overall. Mm. It happens. Yeah, yeah it's just sure. some days you just can't you just don't get it for some whatever reason. But yeah, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of Mega Man, but I watched I think most of this before I fell asleep because it was really late for us. Yeah, it was. <laughs> um, it was late. But yeah, I, I I thought it was good. Obviously, um, the commentary is pretty good during the race as well, explaining what's happening. So, Did yeah. you even have a microphone for this? Like you as the runner? No, uh, yeah. we 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 and it, we didn't have any mics. I mean, we could have if we wanted to, I suppose. But we let the uh, we let the couch handle the, uh, the commentary. Yeah. I thought yeah. that was a good call, to be honest, because the couch could just you know follow up what's going on. Yeah. Here's yeah. also a really stupid thing I did. I mess up this zip. I jump too late off the beam. So that just cost me about maybe 15 to 20 seconds right there. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> because uh, I, I don't know. I wasn't really focused there, I suppose. Well, I have one excuse, but it's a really bad excuse. <laughs> and that is sure. that that the TV, the reason the, the, the models on the TV were the same in the practice room and the ones we were playing there, but the, the cutoff was different from the top. And that's really important in this game. To uh, have yeah. a, so like the top was, it had a worse cutoff. Uh, you can't see it on here, but on the TV, like the cutoff was worse. So, mm. which, like you place those beams, magnet beams at the very top of the screen, and I don't know, they look different on this TV. <laughs> so I don't know, it's sort of. Don't blame the player. Don't blame the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, I mean, I could have. I might as well, I could have as well adapted to it, but I did not. Instead, I lost. Yeah. Just lost twenty seconds there. Uh, so. Jazz, Jazzy in chat says, "Didn't you get sub pixeled at some point?" Uh, I did uh, in the third to final stage. There's a big skip you can do where you skip to uh, skip refighting two bosses, and I was tied with Dexter in there until. Um, I uh, well, <clears throat> I happened to get a bad sub pixel on that skip, which just uh, made me unable to get it. Basically, made it impossible f okay. for me to do the skip. And then Dexter happened to get the skip, or right as that happened to me, oh, that man. was <laughs> that was the race. Damn. That, it was that wasn't really the race, but he 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 didn't make any mistakes after that, so I had, <clears throat> it was impossible to catch up. Yeah. So he got first and you got second, right? Or did you yeah, get first? I yeah, I got second. 
cool. All right. Um, if we move on to the videos you gave us, so is there anything I, in particular that jumps out you want to explain or talk about? Um, what I did with the videos, I'm, I'm not really sure what you guys wanted for the videos. So what I did, I went to my <clears throat> PB and I just um, sort of, there are a lot of videos, at least one for each stage. And I just made like videos of like the, some like important, like, I don't know, important parts, like specific tricks and such various things. Um, yeah. Not really sure if it'll work out, but who knows? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. We'll try it. Um, yeah. If I try and open this. So we start with, I guess we just go in linear order that you've numbered them in. Yeah. Um, so. so cut man basic. Uh, I'll Why? put it up on the screen in one second. <laughs> Hang on. Yeah, but I mean, okay, the first video clip doesn't really showcase any special. It's just start of the game. But you can you can just let it play. Yeah, okay. I don't know. This shows what the game <laughs> looks like, I suppose. There's an you see this amount of points you get here? You can you can get between fifty and one hundred thousand. The less is less the better. Because then it takes less time to scroll up the score after you're done. Uh, uh, this video is actually short. That was pretty much the only thing I wanted to say. But... Okay, that's all right. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, you, see, you see, like the basic movements, like you jump, you shoot. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Uh, the next video has uh, like a tiny little trick in the same stage. Um, <clears throat> so, like the first glitch you do in the run, uh, where you can wrap around. See, I grabbed the ladder down there from the top. And basically skips the entire screen. So how does that work? Um, I don't know. <laughs> game. I don't know. The screen just like it just wraps around like the ladder at the. I don't know. You can just jump up and grab the ladder that is at the bottom of the screen from the top of the screen. Since, uh, well, I don't really know why it works, but it does work. Yeah. Okay. I see. This, this is a very common thing in NES games, so I, I have to. I think it's something to do with actually the the, the NES hardware itself, like the way it, the way it actually like um, how the screen is actually laid out, is the, just how the memory is stored yeah. is that like you know the the top here, is like zero. The bottom here is like two hundred and fifty, and if you go to zero and overflow it, you'll wrap around to the lowest value, obviously. Um, or the highest or whatever and I don't know which way around it is so what's happening is you go up the top the game registers you instead of at zero at 225 and then it puts you on the ladder I guess but, yeah you have to press up to in order to grab it that's yeah, all okay. yeah. So, um, Makes sense, yeah so it's like when you press up the game checks where you are and because of the way the wraparound works it's like oh he's at like you know x whatever 255 instead of at zero but yeah, it, I like it's, how, how you use three different numbers and finally got it right or to be like um, <laughs> 250. <laughs> then you said 225, and yeah. I used to do... it's like <laughs> like that. God, I know how <laughs> I know how memory and computers work. It's fine. Yeah, I I mean I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. It it might be like you know the, yeah. the one up from yeah. there, but but yeah, it, it seems a really common thing in NES games. So I imagine yeah. there are, there are several several more like. Um, like rap related tricks in this run that's coming that are coming up yeah okay so if i play <clears> the <throat> next one uh the next video is uh a trick this is where the runner soft locked it soft locked in the race oh, uh, yeah. see, the, see the item in there is the the magnet beam it's the most important item in the game mm. and um well the the route used to be different you, you just start out with a different boss because the see that technique on the ladder was it wasn't it wasn't known up until like three years ago, so we used to have to start out with a different boss in order to get rid of those blocks in front of the the magnet beam uh. um, but now by if you shoot and press down on the same frame and you only hold down for one frame, like you have to do it on the exact same frame, you sort of like grab the ladder like i don't know like in the like you you grab the ladder but you you don't really grab the ladder. You grab above the ladder, and then when you press up, you get ejected like up into the wall, and then from there you can like jump up and do some fun funky stuff and like <laughs> just barely exit the wall, grab the magnet beam, and then go out again. 
But if you go out too far there, you you're stuck. You're you can't get out. Oh, I see. So so they went too far and then just yeah. got soft locked, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna wonder like, is that? I wonder why there was an item there. It's like, how are you supposed to get that? But yeah, it's like blocks here. You shoot them. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that makes. Yeah, sense. you can shoot. You can shoot them or uh, pick them up, depending on what power up you use. Okay, that's really yeah. interesting. Looks really glitchy. Like it's just Mega Man just flying around the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's actually it's quite complicated. Like, um, um, see so you describe it. See when Mega Man is on the right side on the screen. No, yeah, when he's on the right side of the screen, he is in the current screen that we see on the screen. If that makes sense. Yeah. But when he is on the left side, he's actually zipped to the next screen, the screen above us. So he's current. When he's on the left side of the screen, he's on the screen that is um, the screen after that one. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So what I do is, when I am the left side, I make a jump, and then uh, when I'm at the peak of my jump, I t I tap right so that I sort of teleport back to the visible screen, <laughs> <laughs> like the actual screen. Mm. So that's sort of how that works. Oh, no, I see. Okay. Yeah. So, you're, so you're using the stuff off screen to gain height, and then you go back onto this screen. Grab the yeah. thing and then go onto yeah. the other screen. Yeah. Huh. That's really weird. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought yeah, that see, was happening. Yeah. See, because when on the right side, see, there's a wall there. I'm unable to go up. But on the next screen, there is no wall uh, there. So that's uh, why I can make the jump. Huh. So there's no wall. Uh, it's more like, you know, value wrapping weirdness, I guess. Yeah, that's really interesting. Okay, well, that makes uh, sense. Maybe it doesn't, but I think <laughs> I understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's yeah. really good. Wow. The next video next show one. Yeah. showcases sort of the in like famous climb, sort of a hard for when you're a beginner, but saves a lot of time. It's just very, it's just like clever magnet beam usage. Uh, you just place it in. If you shoot the magnet beam and then re-grab the ladder after you shot it, like you let go and grab it again, you sort of cancel out the uh, his shot animation, and you can start climbing upwards again faster. And that's required to get these like skip these beams, and it's quite tricky, but um, it's not t terribly difficult for an experienced runner. But it's an, it's like a not it's like a notable part of the run. Sure. Mm. So if you're same. just if you're just doing that normally, do those like the electricity things like block you from yeah, continuing? Yeah, for sure, okay. for sure. It's also much slower to climb rather than to uh, yeah jump jump up. Yeah, mm. okay. Mm. Huh. Yeah, so this, like... this does look like something that would be really difficult to pull off as a beginner, but like yeah, you just gotta you just gotta be uh... yeah, just gotta okay. have like good control. I mean, right. That's my face right there, my webcam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right there. I just, I just uh, made the videos off my like VOD. So, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's fine. It was like the last day. Usually we're a bit yeah. earlier with uh, contacting. Yeah. With... So here, here's one of the harder stages in the run, uh, Iceman stage. Uh, I set up a sip right here, which is I don't know harder than it looks, and then another sip right here. Um, Oh, I failed the first beam. <laughs> but anyways, these uh, magnet beams, they have to be in a pixel-perfect position um, when you place them in order to make those zip work. So you need to sort of let go of the beam uh, on the correct frame. Like when the Mega Man is like, on the correct height, you need to let go of the beam so that the beam like stays on the pixel-perfect position so that you can set up these zips and wraps that there are a lot of throughout the run. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are difficult, but they are, they're required if you want to get record times just practicing these like setups and such. So what even is that weapon? Is it is it supposed to wrap around the screen like that? or? No, it's supposed to just work as a platform. Um, you only need, really need to use it uh, during one part of the game in one stage in order to beat the game. But it's a super broken weapon uh, for a speedrun. 
that it's it's that's essentially Mega Man One speedrunning. He's using this weapon just to place it at pixel perfect positions in order to sip and then wrap. <laughs> Uh, that's so weird. So you're like, yeah. so you're like running. Even the, it looks like it's flying across, but are you like just yeah. you're just stood on it, or yeah, it's just flickering because of the like uh, NES limitation. Okay. That's why it's, it looks like it's flickering. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. So it's just a long yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just a long one. Right. Okay. That's what confusing yeah. me. Like you're just running yeah. to the right, and it's like not there and then there. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, but also if you, yeah, you can both sip and wrap with the magnet beam, and uh, wrap doing the wraps is a bit easier. Like the magnet, there are several positions uh, that work for wrapping. Like I can wrap from that one, and then on this one I can also do a wrap. Like it works on several several positions, but the sip only works if the magnet beam as it is. Uh, at it, the highest position possible where you can stand on it, mm. like the mm. top position. But there also needs to be a like solid ground. You see, there's a ground here. And then at the end of the screen, this stops being solid ground. That's where I stop sipping. So you sort of sip against the bottom of the screen when you place a beam at the very top. So uh-huh. that's sort of how it works. <laughs> yeah. Huh. All right. Yeah, this yeah, is a very <laughs> difficult and precise stage mm-hmm. in a run. Sure. How long did it take you to get something like this down? Practice it all. Um, I've been speed on the game for I don't know over f- like five years on and off. So it take, but I'm, uh, I don't know. There, it's a lot of just it's just muscle memory getting those like yeah. getting it all down. It's a lot of practice involved. And here, um, I can restart if you want. <laughs> Yeah, it showcases two things. More sips in this corridor. These are, well, known as corridor sips. <laughs> Quite important to hit, because otherwise you have to walk for the entire corridor. But also in this boss fight, you uh, abuse the... Uh, there's a pause button in this game. It's like the only game with a pause... Mega Man game with a pause button. And if you, have a, sh- going. Yeah, <laughs> if you have a shot out on the screen... Well, if you pause the game... Uh, like the boss uh, in this in this uh, invincibil- invincibility period, it like runs out during the pause, but the shot doesn't move. Mm. So I shoot, I pause until his pe- in this invincibility period runs out, and then I unpause and repeat. So that mm. kills him with just one shot, like very easily. And you you use that pro- against like every boss from now on in the run. Oh, right, okay. That's fun. And it's it re- really funny because. During GDQ, there was a very similar glitch in this in Doom 2016 of all things. <laughs> there's like <laughs> there's like a weapon you can shoot and it stays in the air and kills everything near it, but you can like pause and it stops but still hits everything during the pause. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like exactly the same, like 20 yeah. years later. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. That's really amazing. Cool. Okay. Yeah, you can also use the pause button to abuse um, different stuff but this is the main use against bosses like that mm. cool all right uh so next one. Yeah, on. uh, next one all right we skip ahead quite a bit in fire metal stage um yeah this is the thing i failed in my run right here marathon run it's basically it's nothing too special it's just kind of a precise sip that skips a lot of the uh skips yeah. a lot a big part of the stage and also interesting thing here is that you see there's a ladder at the bottom of the screen what mm-hmm. i do there is that with a how the sip works is that i place a beam at the highest position possible like i did in iceman stage and then when i jump onto that beam i hold up and when i do that on a um, beam that is on the highest position i grab that ladder uh, from the bottom, I grab it, and the screen like scrolls up. So the game thinks that I'm like climbing, like oh, climbing see. that ladder. So the game like scro- lets me climb up to the next screen. Huh? And you're like <laughs> under the level in like that lava thing that's supposed to be there. Yeah. And you like zip across it. That's really cool. So you're like, yeah. so you're, you're going up to the right in this like dead area, and then grabbing the ladder yeah. onto you. <laughs> yeah. 
then from there I can place a magnet beam and zip onto it and then jump up from the magnet beam and skip a large chunk of the level. Yeah, that's, that looks really cool. <laughs> All right, and the next one. All right, so this is, first off, we do the uh, this little guy. We skip him. It's called Iceless because you usually use ice weapon to freeze him. But I skip doing that and instead place beams. And avoid I think... It. Um... You were the only one of the races who did this, right? I think yeah, the pe- people yeah, yeah. are t- people are too coward. They um, they don't dare to do it. That's all. <laughs> because if you do mess it up, it can it's it's bad if you mess it up. Like he can, like like he won't stop following you at all. He's very aggressive, as you can see. He wants yeah. to take you down. And you're like just side. jumping yeah. above him yeah. the entire time. Pretty precise <laughs> yeah. jumping when he jumps. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of, it can be quite tricky because his movement isn't <clears throat> isn't set. He can do a like, bunch of different things that can throw you off and yeah, just make you lose time instead of gain like a second and a half like you do. Yeah. Do that <laughs> instead. And then right Sorry. after there's another crazy zip that puts you to to like out of yeah. bounds and you just fall down. Yeah, it's a similar zip as in the last stage, fireman stage. Well, the first one that I do right here is just like regular zip and this one here you see there's a ladder at the bottom again mm. i grab the ladder same way and climb up and that enables me to just zip here i have to pause <laughs> the game pause and unpause the game or else you die on that zip to the spikes that are there for some reason okay. but also it's a long long zip saves a lot of time yeah that also, does look like a really big one yeah also Interesting thing is that you have to hold at the end of that screen a zip. You have to face right when you end, uh, go to the end of the screen, or else you won't like enter the next screen. Like you need to be facing right in order for the game to let you enter this screen, or else you will just like go through the screen and die. <laughs> no, okay. So yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of inputs. Uh, like. Then you think you finally got the zip, right? And then you have to pause and unpause to not die. You have to <laughs> look, right? Yeah, that, that looks fairly uh, complicated. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's lots of inputs. All right, and then this one. This is the stage you would have to play first normally, but since we got, uh, but now that we have the mag, we can skip these platforms. It's a big time save. Um, that's pretty much all I want to show up. I fail a zip setup. You can do a zip right there, but it's very difficult. But yeah, this is what. Um, yeah, you can do it with a magnet beam at this stage. So it's a lot of time skipping those green platforms. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so you just run across the whole level again. <laughs> yeah. Imagine these like, open-ended levels are all just this, right? You just magnet beam across it. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, and next, then... next, next video has the most important trick in the game. It's called the ass grab. It's when you... Uh, grab the orb after you defeat the boss and um, while Mega Man is like sitting on his ass <laughs> as the ass grab <laughs> how much time does that one save I, I have no idea but you have you have to get it really it's the central yeah. trick <laughs> yeah. See, I, I used the I used the pause trick against that boss as well kill some uh, right. if you, like if yeah, you perfect. actually if you try to kill this boss without the pause trick it's not even worth using the bomb since you can only get one hit off normally so it's going to be sort of interesting yeah. alright um, and then this one okay this one is not really going to showcase anything since I failed this but you can do a big zip here saves about 6 seconds but so that's sort of I think I failed in my world record and then I fall down here but lose like eight seconds in total. But yeah, you can do a big zip there. Oh, so it zip you to like this room. Yeah, you get to this room. Okay. So, yeah, so sort of big time save. Got on my record, but we failed. There's <laughs> this one. Uh, here is more. Here's the classic Yellow Devil fight. The fight takes like two minutes normally, I think, like one and a half minutes at least. Because you can only get one hit in per cycle without glitches or like oh, abusing, exploiting the game. But you can mm. kill him in like 
four seconds with the pause button like that. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Such a silly thing. Yeah, it's That's great. So, so good. All right, and then a few more. Thirteen. A couple more. Yeah, this one has the uh, <clears throat> the like the big Wiley two skips. Probably the hardest part. Of, this this is the hardest part of the run. This is where you can get the bad sub pixel. See, I do more of the same jumps here, like I did before. Uh, this is where you can get a bad sub pixel and get like ejected out of the wall. Um, oh yeah. Which I didn't do during this run, fortunately. But this is a very difficult and also yeah random part of the run. It's where most really good runs go to die. <laughs> yeah, got past both of those this run. Nice. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. right. You you zip like back and forth between right and left, right? And like it looks like you're slowly going up. And then once you reach that point, the screen goes down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah once you reach the very top, you yeah, the screen wraps. Sort of. But yeah. uh, well, you, you wrap down to the next yeah, yeah. screen. It just looks so broken and it is, but it's great. <laughs> it's I love so it. <laughs> Right, uh, and then there's this one. Yeah, this is the second to final level. Uh, it's, a, it's a very short level, thanks to the skips. Uh, there I do a frame perfect jump at the start, which sets me up for that beam position. And there I exit the wall in a certain position, sets me up for this beam position. So I get both wrapped. And here's, a, here's a, like the biggest sip in the game. Whoa. <laughs> Your bitrate can't even handle it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> that's so good. Damn, so that's okay. like a really long corridor that has the top filled in, and you can just zip through all the way through. Yeah. That's really mm. cool. And this is sort of a very cool fight. See, I, I, I get a new block sometimes when I throw it and I get a new block. That happens if you press the B button uh, on the same frame as the last like block piece leaves the screen. You can sort of re-grab that block you just threw. Um oh, right. Uh, you, um, I don't know, it saves like it saves a lot of time doing that fight that way, but uh, it's it's like a light, late run killer. It's not super difficult, but when you have when you're on good pace and you sort of might have nerves because you're on a good pace, it's very it can happen. It has happened to me that I've failed this sort of fight. It's could you, these... Is it just uh, could you just mash the B button then? No. Or? Because then uh -huh. you would throw with the block immediately. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, just yeah, that, makes it, uh, that makes it complicated. So, yeah. so obviously the the pause glitch doesn't work on this boss then, because when you hit it, it like disappears. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm. So you have to use that. That's pretty cool. Grabbing the yeah. same block you just threw. <laughs> right. <laughs> this one. So this final level. Um, well, this is pretty much the entire level I'm going to show here, but it's very short. First, you. There's a conveniently placed ammo refill. Place a beam right there, do a sip. Um, not a set, set up for a sip here. And here comes one of the bigger skips in the game. I have no idea what just happened. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? You do that and you skip fighting four bosses. Oh, wow. What oh. basically happens is that... Um, when you have a weapon out on the screen, like the magnet beam, and I, you sort of have an, say I have a weapon out on the screen, and then I get hit by him, I sort of go into this, this tumble animation, and then if I press the start button, um, since I have a weapon out on the screen, the game is unable to bring up the weapon menu. And instead of what it does is that it repeats like my previous animation, the last animation my character did. So the last animation my character did was the tumble, so at least this knockback animation. And that's sort of, every time that happens, you get like a slight boost. So if you just mash the start button, you sort of start to ascend, you like go up on the screen. And then if you're high enough up on the screen, when his, one of his bomb explodes, you sort of turn into his bomb. And that makes it able to go through the ceiling. You see, I sort of turn into a glitch sprite. 
And when you're in the glitch fight, you can go through the ceiling and onto the next screen and then sip, sort of sip through the entire refight section until you hit a checkpoint and that checkpoint is right for the final boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's ridiculous. So you turn into a bomb. I don't know. So so you get you get hit and knocked back. So then you pause and then get knocked back every frame or however fast you pause. And yeah. then you turn into a bomb, which lets you go through the wall so you can zip across the room to hit a checkpoint. <laughs> Yeah, that, that, yeah, that's that's how it works. Okay, that's pretty, good. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Pretty easy to perform. Like it's, it's, it, it's like that's a very final trick of the run. The final boss is very very easy. Okay. Um, like once you hit that, you're even in the vault. I'm like, I turn around because my girlfriend's sitting next to the room, and I say to her, "I'm gonna get a new world record." Like I turn around. It's <laughs> actually what I do. When I say okay. it in Swedish. It's like I'm gonna get a new world record. That's and that's this. The final video is just the final boss. It's gonna showcase. It's pretty easy. The first form is weak to fire, so it dies really quickly. And then for the second form, I'm using sort of the fire, this shield. Like this fire weapon has like this shield that can hit uh, sort of like that core several times each jump. And yeah, it's it's an easy easy fight. Okay. That sort of is the end of the game. Nice. It's nice when it ends on something easy and not something really hard that wastes all your <laughs> the whole run. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, luckily, yeah. Luckily, once you're past that refight skip, you can. It, the game is basically over. Nice. nice. Got your run. Also, I think yeah, and, <clears throat> and there's, yeah, it's... there's one last video, green screen. Should we play that one? Uh, sure, I wanted to make an additional video, but I wasn't able to get the glitch in time. But this is one interesting glitch you can showcase. Okay. But yeah, in this screen, with this enemy right here. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you can make the green, no, not the green, the screen turn green <sighs> by creating enough lag in a specific spot, part of the level. You can spawn a like water current that it's the water current is located in the second to last level but by doing that the uh, lagging the game enough at that specific spot you can spawn that water current in this level and that turns the uh, game green and like, makes Mega Man move quicker wow okay oh. but is this not used in runs then no this this trick is actually uh, banned in runs because um sort of part uh, considered the uh, arbitrary code execution okay. and it's actually possible to beat this game in under four minutes while credits warp in under four minutes with a okay Damn. okay and that's a <laughs> complete separate category um i think there are videos the fastest runner doesn't have a vod but um in that run you only play two levels in for real time mm. Yeah, when it comes it, to stuff like that, it's not too interesting to run if it's just like... Yeah, you do just, it once and then never again, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. to, Damn. Yeah, but I wanted to show, uh, maybe I can just find a quick video of it, but okay. you can actually... There's a way to beat this level early. Um, That's sort of what spawned the... Uh, like the current category we do is called All Stages. And... Um, what sort of spawned that category was a trick found in that stage, Iceman stage, that let you beat the level in like 40 seconds. And then it happens if you press like wiggle and press left and right uh, on a very um, specific position, you can sort of spawn the level end orb, I think. I think that's how it works. You can make it spawn out of thin air and beat the stage. It's like... <laughs> random interesting yeah and uh, people didn't like that trick i don't don't like the trick it's very very hard to do so like heck it we're just gonna d disallow a, a arbitrary code execution stuff yeah that makes sense it, it future proofs the run as well because who knows what could get found like <laughs> do some weird movement right at the start and then walk to the credits even quicker or something you know Not yeah any of it Let's see if I ah uh, maybe I'm going might be unable to find something, but yeah, it's 
I can say you go to a position, you wiggle left and right, and bam, you beat the level. That's, <laughs> that's basically how it works. Damn. <laughs> it's, it's stupid. But it's cool. Yeah, that's... So that's basically the game, pretty much the speed run. Cool. So I have one question, um, because I know you also run Half Life and Quake. Um, are there any similarities between these in these two runs or three runs? I guess, even though they're very different games. Because um, you run both of them, and uh, it's an interesting combination of games. <laughs> I so, man, I don't. Uh, maybe Quake and Half Life are similar, but I don't think there's really a similarity between. Like in in the way, like and, and do both involve like what do both <laughs> games have that that make you want to run them? Is it just because of the nostalgia factor, or is there think... like something like? Both of them require like precision tricks or stuff like that. I think most of it is nostalgia, really. Like the games I played when I was younger, and games I really liked playing as well. So when I started running speed running, I sort of I sort of was like, hmm, what game did I really like playing as a kid? Oh, I like playing Mega Man. Let's try to learn the speed run for it. So that's pretty much how I started with Mega Man. Mm. And I have, same goes with like Half Life. Watch a I watch like a video speed old speed runs like oh that looks really cool. I just wanted to I want to do this, but I don't think I really I'm not really sure like if there are any similarities. I just, just like the games the way they are. You know that makes sense. Yeah, I was thinking maybe you know um, that's something that you learned from from Mega Man speedruns, like specific um, like finger well not finger movements because the controllers are very different. <laughs> like like the, the the fact that like both runs maybe use like a specific reaction time requirements or something like that. Something that that would that carries over that would help you. Mm. Mm, but the I games mean, are too different, I guess. So I think about the games you run. I don't know about you actually, yes, but I run like you know. PS PlayStation games as well as yeah. GTA. That no, I don't know. It's just it's just nostalgia, just what I know as a kid. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, mm. but maybe there was something. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I don't have any other questions. We've been through pretty much everything. We went through uh, AGDQ and everything between Half Life and stuff. That uh, Half Life Mega Man <laughs> confusing <laughs> me now. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, the, the one thing I did want to ask the the Quake skip we saw we, we oh, kind yeah. of speculated i think we read that you're killing an enemy for a wall or something what what exactly is happening i'll try and find a video of it um i can find you a video it's real quick okay if you would like um what's happening is well let's see if it's uh, the video might, might not be the greatest um but what happens is that you um like the uh, thunderbolt like the weapon that shoots out lightning, uh, if you shoot it at very specific um, positions, like certain angles, you can hit stuff through the wall. Well, you don't really shoot through the wall, but I'm not really sure exactly how it works, but that's basically what it does. You, sh you aim at a certain position, you shoot, and then an enemy dies somewhere. Um, but it's, it's very, very precise. Um... Oh yeah, I have a, I have a video right here. Okay, if you just put it in Skype, I'll open it. Sure. Uh, it's gonna mess up the cropping for a little bit, but it should be alright. Yeah. <laughs> it shows the that shows the entire entire level, but I don't know, might as well, maybe. Yeah, it's alright. I'll play it. Uh, do do. All right, so I'll let this video play. So yeah, what? So we're coming through. Yeah, so this is the unskippable elevator, right? It takes about it takes about one minute for it to finish. And while you're waiting for that, you can, you know, do stuff without losing time, obviously, since you have to wait. So mm. what it does here, he's going to... He kills an enemy up there, because if he doesn't kill it, he can get in the way earlier. Well, after, afterward, uh, later, I mean. So what he does is right now is he's going to grab a weapon, like the strongest weapon in the game, the Thunderbolt. 
Um, that is located right over here. And now he's going back to that elevator. Not the big one, but this one. And he's going to aim at the very specific, specific position, position at the wall, strafe out, and then shoot. And if he does that correctly, you see that his kill counter in the top right turned from 6 to 7, which means that he managed to kill the enemy, final enemy through the wall. So when that enemy dies, that triggers sort of like this... Uh, um, there's sort of like this pillar in the middle that conceals the rune that you need to grab. That rune right there. Mm. So it makes the pillar like go down. So once that like elevator right finishes and the door opens, it's already like... It's, it's no longer blocking the rune at all. So he is able to grab the rune immediately and exit the level as soon as possible, saving about five seconds. Huh. So how yeah. did you find this? Or not you? I... But... Man, I don't know. <laughs> it must have took it must have took him a lot of like trial and error. Like, sure, this it was a known trick. Like, this trick has been used in a uh, different level. So he must have had like an idea. Hmm, this trick might be possible in this level. Mm -hmm. And if it was possible, it would save time. So maybe he has looked at like tried at various different things. Man, I don't know. Because it seems like a very hard thing to attempt, like trial and error. Mm, uh, yeah. He's shooting who at random walls. Do you, do you know who found it? It's uh, the um, the LD air. If you've heard of him, he runs. He uh, has like runs. He has a quake run. He has the fourth best time in quake, and he also runs um, Wolfenstein. Which Wolfenstein is game is that? I don't remember. So I think it runs Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Okay. okay. Like I a very FPS game. Similar, isn't it? Yeah. I think that that one's based on Quake 3 engine, but it doesn't seem to matter. He still, still kicks ass in Quake. <laughs> All right, cool. Just now we have an explanation. I mean, we, we understood that you were killing someone through a wall, but we had no idea why it was important. <laughs> From this <laughs> elevator that was already <laughs> in motion. It was really weird. Yeah, awesome. All right. Um, so we've got a couple of uh, chat questions, I guess. Do we have any final questions before we ask those? No, I'm Joe? good. Go on, um, well, uh, one, one last question. Um, what are your goals for the future, Cool Kids? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to improve my uh, record in Mega Man. Get that, um, that failure out of the way that you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's okay, but... Um, I have the current record, but I want to improve it by. I know I can improve it by at least ten seconds or so. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking to do that. Cool. Nice. All right, All right then. Um, um, so that's yeah. Q and A. Yeah, go on. <sighs> so uh, the first question is: um, I guess this one goes for all of us. Um, do we have any plans for ESA? Um, you go first, I guess, cool kids. Sure, I plan. I do plan on attending. For sure. Yeah, I'll be there. I don't I'm not know. sure, which, I'm not sure which, which games I'll be playing, but it doesn't really matter. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. I'll see as if well. I can make it, but I have no idea what I'm gonna submit. Yeah, I think submissions open within the month. Actually. Yeah, they We're are very get soon. That, get that together. Hmm. Mm. I was like previously where I was doing uh, Battle of Gay Tony. I was thinking of submitting that, but. It's a game that's been in ESAs quite a lot, and I don't think a hundred percent would get in because it's pretty long. Mm. Um, How long is that again? You know, I don't even remember. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> I think it's like four <laughs> hours. Because Fire City one hundred percent got in. Once. It, no, it's five and a half hours. Mm. So yeah, I mean, you might, you might if you have yeah. like a. a slot left I think they'll let you submit four games or something like that yeah. so if you have three games and then like don't know what to do for the four you might as well give it a try yeah I'll give it a shot I mean uh, that is, the thing is uh, Gay Tony and uh, Lost and Damned have been done like alternating on every ESA for a few years yeah. so they probably won't accept it again so I feel it, like it depends it... on how many other GTA submissions there are going yeah. to be yeah, I'll I'll think about what I'm submitting. It doesn't matter. I mean, nothing of mine got in last year, and I was perfectly fine with it. If anything, it makes it so I don't have to practice anything and kind of relax <laughs> more at the event. So sometimes it's better that way. Um, 
Yeah, okay, I guess I can interpret Trollbear's name uh, question into a different thing. It's like, where did you get your name from, Cool Kid, actually? Because you have different names on different things, right? Yeah, the big boy. Yeah. What's his name? His Twitch. I used to, well, I still sort of do. I just used, I never really stuck with one username. I just picked a random username for each site I visited. I was never, I never intended on going big with one username. So I had like a different username on Ustream, different username on IRC, different username on Steam. And uh, yeah, this just happened to be my, be my speedrun username. It doesn't really have any, it doesn't really have any uh, history up Aww. surrounding okay. it. It's just... <laughs> uh, normally everyone <laughs> just we've had on so far has had a cool story of how they got their name. <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry. It's uh, no cool story though. surrounding this one. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. I haven't had too many instances of people just using random things. Like, I thought it would be that you don't use it on Twitch because like, it was taken on Twitch or something like that. Um, uh, I guess not. Oh. Alright then. Um, next question. Yep. What are your favorite speedruns to watch? Not counting Mega Man, Half-Life and Quake and maybe any other games that you run. Hmm. Um, I really like watching. Well, actually, I have a I have a current favorite thing to watch right now, and that is uh, Ninja Gaiden by Arcus eighty seven on Twitch. Um, but I'm not sure if it's the game or just his stream that I really like watching. But he plays that game for ten hours a day, five days a week. Um, <laughs> you might, you guys might have heard of him, but he's quite a dedicated streamer. Damn. Um, but uh, games, I yeah, I like watching Ninja Gaiden. Like when he plays it, I like watching um, hmm, other Mega Man games. But that doesn't really count since. <laughs> uh, I like watching. Uh, yeah. Super Metroid, I like watching as well. Oh yeah, oh, yeah of course, yeah. Legend of Zelda, Zelda Two, on NES, oh, yeah. one of my favorite games to watch. Yeah, some of my favorites. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have a stupid question. Cool kid, would you rather be a giraffe or a wildebeest? Giraffe. Oh, Why? Man, do you have any reason? <laughs> I googled the wildebeest and it looks stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone knows and loves a giraffe, but uh, yeah. no one cares about <laughs> beasts. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to interpret uh, that question as, hey, cool kid, when are you going to do Barney runs? <laughs> or how is Barney. Barney doing? I think it could be a different Barney. How is Barney doing? Barney. Is it a reference I don't get, is it? Maybe it's a reference to uh, Barney from Half-Life. Oh, sort of, of course. Sort of, that's my favorite character from Half-Life. <laughs> um, I have actually have... Oh, hold on. Just give me... It comes this Half-Life plushie. <laughs> give, me, give me one minute. Okay, all right. I mean, like, ten seconds. All, all right. right. Uh, Do we have any questions that aren't to um, to us or to Kogut? No. Uh, oh, hey, Dexter. <laughs> I didn't see. Oh, man. What is that? Is that a... That's Barney from Half-Life. I like... Yes, he actual has a... picture, a framed painting picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear that's interesting you thought it was a plushie <laughs> what has he got okay so I'll, I'll have to ask him like so so what is yeah. about barney from half-life then what, what is that i know he's he's just i know he's like him he's just the best <laughs> it's it's kind of silly but that's what i i don't know, like him but yeah he's still he's doing great as well he's still doing great where where did you get that did you just print it yourself and frame it or like did did someone give it to you it was a gift it was a birthday gift from uh quadracid oh, yeah, yeah. very well-known half-life runner we actually uh um uh, great real life friends we um uh, mm. known each other since we were 14. Okay. Did any of you like get the other into speedrunning? What what's your um, your story? Because yeah, Quadras I... um, did uh, a segmented Half Life run a few years ago, and that that one is is that still um, 
the fastest uh, scripted time. I believe so. The yeah. People are working on a new uh, segment to run, but it's gonna the new segment to run is gonna be completely different from mm. that one. And uh, uh, wait, wait, he did a single segment run as well. Yeah, a single. He did a single segment with scripts like mm. way back, and then we did a team run. Well, he did most of the segments, but we did a team run. Yeah, uh, yeah. segment script. But um, he gave it to me as a birthday present, like uh, I think it was five years ago. Now it's gonna be five years. Wow. So, so what's the story for the two of you getting into speedrunning? I I got him into speedrunning. I um I don't really know how I got interested from the start, but I somehow ended up on Speed Demos Archives website, and I downloaded some of their runs. Well, I know what happened. I okay. What happened first is. I downloaded a Halfway speedrun of this Swedish sort of Counter Strike forum, mm-hmm. and I watched it. and I was like, "Wow, that's that. This is really cool." Was so that, that Spider Waffles? No, that was a um, game by a guy called Fink Circle, aka Radon. I think oh, it's yeah, quite yeah. unknown, but that the speedrun time was like fifty-five minutes segmented. I hadn't even played the game, but I was still watching about. Wow, this is really cool. <laughs> so then I think I. I showed the video to Quadrasid, and I was showing me like a Super Mario Bros. video as well. It's like, whoa, this is cool. So then after that, we sort of, we had, still hadn't played Half-Life, but we wanted to. And then eventually we got Half-Life and played it and sort of got interested in doing speedrun steam things with it. That's sort of how it happened. Cool. Nice. Yeah. I'm sure Josh has no idea who all these people are. <laughs> yeah, <I don't> know. <laughs> yeah, I know all these names. Like he thinks Circle uh, thinks about to me. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually interesting to know. Um, next question. Uh, the... Well, we're talking about something still. No, the last question is from Tadeva. Do you like Blue Shift? Yeah, I love Blue Shift because that's Barney. That's the main <laughs> protagonist. It's my man. I don't get any of these Half Life references. I need to play Half Life. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. But yeah, you know, Half Life is. There's original Half Life, and then there are two expansions that. Like the expansions occur at the same time, like play out at the same time as original Half Life. Like they happen at the same time. Okay. But you play as a different character, so you like get to experience the. Um, events. Events from different perspectives. Perspectives and one of the them in Blue Shift is from Barney's perspective. It's uh, good. Love it. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I think I said this. It's just like um, the episodes from Liberty City that also take uh, place at the same time. Mm. The same idea. I think it's a really cool idea. Yeah, that is. The more games should do that. I've seen like uh, the only thing I can think of is like Lion King Free. <laughs> oh that. yeah. Um. Uh, what was I going to? Oh, what do you think of Barney in Half Life Two? Oh, I don't even care about him at all. No, <laughs> I haven't even thought about him. Anything? No, nothing. Zero interest. Do you even like enjoy the the second installment of the game that much? I it's really fun to play through the first time, but other than that, it's I don't I don't replay it ever. It's like. Mm-hmm. No, but it's very fun to play through the first time. Okay. All right. Um. Oh, I have one from Dexter. Your favorite uh, click and point game. Favorite click and point game is King's Quest Five. All right. Um. <laughs> why? Why is that? Why? Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's funny. It looks good. It has good okay. sounds, music, and all. Just like it. <laughs> I'm not big into point and click, but it's not, that one's fun. And also, uninvited on the NES is good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, the last one is the... Half Life mods, I think. Have, have, uh, ever speed ran? Speed ran? How do you say that? Any Half Life mods? No, zero. Okay. Never done it. Huh. There's lots. Um, yeah, there's, there's a lot. Yeah, I think. Yeah. 
There is like some more well-known ones such as Day Hunger and like Half-Life Wanted and like Gunman Chronicles. I mean, but um, no, I haven't speedrun any of those mods. Okay. And I think I, we're out of questions. It's, it's, yeah. All right then, should we move on to the end? Yeah, this was a long episode. Yeah, this was because of the whole GDQ. We Last yeah. episode we had the GDQ recap thing we did, and that was like a normal episode length. And this time <laughs> we had that and an actual person to talk to about a game, so it took a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good. I liked it. Like, it, yeah. you did a different format where you had like lots of little clips of just how the skips work from your PB. So it was nice to just go over it because it was like <laughs> when I watched it at uh, GDQ, it was like I didn't understand what was happening too much, even with the commentary. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was nice. able to follow some of it, but uh, it's nice to get a get a, a more in depth still. Yeah. But was, right. Thanks for being on the show. All right, no uh, problem. I'm glad it. Uh... I'm glad it worked out video video clips that they weren't <sighs> yeah, confusing. Yeah. All right, nice. Yeah. Uh, so let's see what's on our list. Uh, remind people to follow the guests. So yeah, your Twitch is. I need to link it because it's not cool, kid. It's it's the big boy. The big boy. Right? I got it. What's I at the end? Oh, and two O's. All right. I'm going to guess it's this. <laughs> yes, that's it. Yeah. Just to make my life hard. <laughs> well, <laughs> follow the big boy. Um, and us, <laughs> and we're today's uh, target. Uh, and uh, do we have anything else to say? Uh, we need to find. We're trying to get the f fin runs guy for next week, shouldn't we? Oh yeah. Um. And oh yeah. Uh, how do you normally end your streams, Cool Kid? Because we normally end our end this podcast the same way the streamer normally ends their stream. <laughs> So how do you normally do that? I just click stop streaming. So <laughs> click it right now. <laughs> you don't even like say bye or anything? I do. So I'll say bye. I'll be back tomorrow. And then I even don't come back for tomorrow. And then I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds about right. No, but I, I end my stream by looking for a raid target. So I'm like, hmm, who am I going to raid? And then, uh, then I... Raid targets have become a bit old fashioned, I feel, with like the hosting thing. Like yeah, a lot of yeah, people they yeah. just host now and you know, mm. that's it. Yes, okay, that's true. I, I meant to say host target. I never do raids like, oh, go into this chat and type this message. I'm, I'm, I just just mm. host. I just like link their channel and then host their channel. Okay. So right now I see that um, one of my buddies who were in the Mega Man race is oh. currently playing Mega Man, it looks like. So I would like. That seems uh, fitting. I'll have to like, go into his uh, channel and host him. All right then. So give me put the link in uh, Twitch chat and then I'll do the same as well. I see. I'm not sure if he's still playing Mega Man, but he was playing Mega Man like, I think, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <Some look. Yeah. laughs> yeah. Go to him anyways, or host him. Um, he is playing not Mega Man, it's some Gremlins 2, the new batch. Alright, follow, follow, yeah. He's a, oh, and he's got a kid. Oh. Yeah, he's actually, yeah, I can tell you some background story on Andy. He's actually, he was at HQ, he was part of the Mega Race, but he's also a father of six. Wow. But still being a, like, godly NES speedrunner. Huh. Yeah, he has a good time. Uh, like he's third or fourth or second, right, on the leaderboards. In Mega Man, yeah, five seconds behind. And in this Gremlins games game, he has a world record, for example. He has the world record in DuckTales and various uh, NES games. Damn. Yeah. Um, I can barely find the time or ability to do any of that anyway, <laughs> yet alone with six kids. <laughs> Responsibility, <laughs> holy crap. All right then. So we'll go there. Well, it seems like a decent host rate, so we'll do that. Um, and uh, I guess we'll do what you do and just say thanks for watching. Bye. We need to we'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, back right. tomorrow, See except we won't. Bye. See you tomorrow. Oh, yeah, it's playing the video again. <laughs>